Welcome to the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast with your host, Cody Jansen. What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Cody Jansen, and welcome to maybe our most anticipated episode of the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast to date. This is our Daytona Review podcast, episode 19, and we're brought to you by CST Tires. Big episode coming at you tonight. Sean Taylor and Tyler Hamrick will join the show again to cover everything that happened at Daytona, and Lord knows that there's plenty to talk about. We'll also be joined by Daytona winner Chad Weenan. First time podium finisher Alan Myers and Brandon Hogue, who's looking like a real contender. But before we get into the wild day at Daytona, we have to address the COVID 19 outbreak amid the current worldwide crisis. As we sit here on Thursday evening, March 12th, there has been no changes to the upcoming ATV motocross schedule. But I was told that there was going to be a press release sometime today, and that never happened happened. They were going to announce kind of where their stance and their moves were going forward. In the current climate, everything is changing so fast that makes me believe that they're adjusting on the fly. So I have a hard time seeing things going on as scheduled in this current climate, but we have nothing to report at this time. And I will report something when there's something to report. So I'm going to ask you just to stay locked in on my social media pages, my personal page, Cody Jansen, the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast pages. I'll obviously keep you guys updated as I learn things. But as of right now, there's nothing to report. I was hoping there would be when we would record this episode. But as of right now, there is nothing to report with all that's happening in sports and beyond with the coronavirus. It's hard to even wrap your head around it. Thankfully, this is a podcast and we can maintain this relationship without risk. So we have so much great stuff to talk about. I think we should get right into that. Talk about happy things. But before we dig too deep, let's thank all the great people who make this show possible. We are proud to announce new show sponsor, Gripped Gloves. Gripped is an ATV rider owned and operated brand with the rider in mind with the goal of keeping costs affordable. The Michigan-based family operation recognizes riders' desire to showcase their identity with eccentric colorways and crazy patterns, something not often found in the work of big manufacturers. Here to push stereotypes and limitations, Gripped is driven to produce a glove with cool colors and designs that won't break the bank. Get a grip on life. Check them out today at gripgloves.com. That's G-R-I-P-T gloves.com. Use discount code DIGGINGDEEP10 to save at checkout. Thank you to Motorsports Powerhouse and show sponsor, Yamaha. We are proud to be partnered with the winningest manufacturer of the past decade in ATV motocross and the number one OEM supporter of ATV racing. The Digging Deep ATV MX podcast is Team Blue Crew. Thank you, Yamaha. Check them out at yamahaoutdoors.com. Thanks to another show sponsor that is part of Racing Royalty and longtime sponsor of my personal racing efforts, Valvoline. For over 150 years, Valvoline has been dedicated to innovating and improving your riding and driving experience. The world's oldest oil company still leads the charge with unrivaled products and lubricants. Thanks to Team Valvoline for coming on board. Thanks to our title sponsor, CST Tires, csttires.com. The Pulse MXR tire is the best tire on the market no matter what the terrain. Join the CST takeover today or prepare to be beat by someone who did. CST tires, where passion meets the ground. Thank you to SSI Decals. SSI Decals was a key contributor to Team USA's winning efforts at the Quad Cross of Nations and simply put, is the decal choice of champions everywhere. Their track record speaks for itself. Champions choose SSI Decals for unmatched look and quality. Thanks to those guys. Check them out today at SSIDecals.com. Thank you to DID Racing Chain and their 520 ATV2 X-Ring Chain. Team USA, Joel Hattrick, and myself all trusted DID's unrivaled chain quality all the way to championship victory this past season. Wherever you go, go with DID. Thank you, Namira Technologies. Namira, pistons with an attitude. Namira has led the charge in the ATV and side-by-side market since 2001 with their wide array of pistons, rings, gaskets, and industry-leading top-end repair kits. Visit at your local dealer or online at namira.com. That's N-A-M-U-R-A.com. And thanks to those guys for giving away a top-end repair kit to one of our lucky listeners this past week. 
Also a big thanks to Bronco ATV and UTV components. Bronco has been the industry leader in replacement hard parts and accessories for all makes and models for over 15 years. Whether it's electrical components, engine internals like rods and cylinders, suspension parts or bearing kits, Bronco is your hard parts source when it comes to whatever you need for whatever you ride. BroncoATV.com. Thanks to 4Works Carbon for their continued support. Known for their hoods, seat covers, array of carbon parts, and so much more, 4Works is your one-stop shop to give your ATV a new and improved look with increased function for 2020. New year, new look with 4Works Carbon. Head over to their social media pages or website today. Thanks to 4Works Carbon. Thanks as always to Evans Waterless Power Sports Coolant. Upgrade to Evans now to avoid overheating and boil over next time you hit the track. When conditions are at their worst, Evans is at its best. Use discount code DIGGINGDEEP20 to save at checkout, evanscoolant.com. Thanks to DP Brakes, the unquestioned leader in motorsports and power sports braking. DP is the brand responsible for allowing Joel Hetrick, myself, and so many others to outbreak the competition every time we hit the racetrack. It's not too late to join the team, so act fast dp-brakes.com thanks to blenders eyewear whose life and forward motion brand is the perfect fit to partner with our podcast you won't find better shades for a more attractive price anywhere else use discount code digging deep 20 to save on the trendiest shades on the market blenders eyewear.com thanks to oats overnight life is hard make breakfast easy simply combine with milk before bed and enjoy your to-go breakfast in the morning overnight oatmeal loaded with superfoods perfect for athletes Use discount code DIGGINGDEEP10 to save at checkout, oatsovernight.com. Thanks to Mountaineer Brand. If you know me, you know I love my beard. That's why I treat it right with Mountaineer Brand's all-natural washes, oils, balms, and more. Use discount code CODY'S FAVE in all caps, that's C-O-D-Y-S-F-A-V, CODY'S FAVE, in all caps at mountaineerbrand.com. Thanks to Avocado Green Mattresses. We all know that sleep and rest are an important part of any athlete's routine. Avocado's line of natural mattresses and pillows provide exactly the support you need to ensure you perform at your best while doing the best for the planet. The Avocado mattress offers zone back support with an internal support unit, meaning whether you're recovering from a hard day of riding or relaxing on a Sunday morning, you will be experiencing next level comfort. With a 100 night sleep trial, free shipping, free return pickup, and a 25 year warranty, Getting your Avocado Green Mattress could not be any easier. Step up your sleep game by visiting avocadomattress.com. And finally, we are super excited to announce our newest partnership. If you were to guess on average how many days people in the United States have to wait to see a doctor, what would you say? Americans have to wait on average around 29 days to see a doctor in major US cities. If you're dealing with a condition like erectile dysfunction, you want treatment ASAP. That's why our friends at Roman have spent years building a digital platform that can connect you with a licensed doctor in your state from the comfort of your own home. Roman makes it convenient to get the treatment you need on your schedule. Just grab your computer or phone, complete a free online visit, and you'll hear back from a U.S. licensed physician within 24 hours. And if the doctor decides that treatment is right for you, Roman's Pharmacy can ship your medication to you with free two-day shipping. You also get free unlimited follow-ups with your doctor anytime you have questions or want to adjust your treatment plan. With Roman, there are no commitments and you can cancel anytime. So if you're struggling with ED, go to GetRoman.com digging for your free online visit and free two-day shipping. That's GetRoman.com digging for your free online visit and free two-day shipping. From our new partners to our original sponsors, thanks for supporting the number one podcast in ATV racing and for making this dream a reality for both us and our listeners. We pride ourselves in partnering with only the best brands inside and outside the industry, so better your riding experience and your lifestyle by supporting the sponsors who support us. If you enjoy the show, the best thing you can do is support our partners. And if you're interested in becoming a partner of the show, shoot me a message or email today for more details. Once again, thanks to all of our sponsors. Okay, let's get into our first rider interview. Enjoy. And now we are proud to welcome our first guest of the night, brought to you by DID Racing Chain and their 520 ATV2 X-Ring Chain. It's Brandon Hogue. What's up, mate? Thanks for coming on the show. What's up, man? Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, no better time to get you on than now. Um, big day for you at Daytona. I know you probably wanted more than that um, based on some of the conversations we've had and, and you being on the podcast last time, but 
man, to come out of there with the top five with such a stacked field and, uh, you know, just simply getting out of there safe and sound with a solid result, that's a, that's a pretty big positive, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, Daytona was actually pretty well for me. Um, I am healthy, and, like, that, that was kind of a big thing because I know it, it gets pretty sketchy with how tight the track is and how fast everyone goes. But, um, yeah, Daytona was really well. Um, qualifying was pretty good. And, uh, yeah, I felt pretty good just, like, from the first few laps of the track. And then I knew, you know, I might be on today. So uh, I tried to take advantage of it. But, yeah, man, it was just all around a pretty dang good day. Yeah, that was, uh, man, like for somebody who obviously pulls for you, um, if for the people that have listened to the podcast in the past, like we go back pretty far. But, um, you know, when you talked uh, on the last podcast, you kind of talked about the lofty goals that you had and you backed it up like from the jump. You know, you came out, you're second in qualifying, um, you were on top for a while, which is pretty darn cool. And uh, Joel ends up sneaking by you there and taking the pole. But, you finished second in qualifying and, uh, and like, that's like kind of, you sounded like that's where you expected to be. Am I right? Yeah. Um, I, you know, what's funny is the first qualifier, uh, I felt really good and I never really put like a solid lap down and I'm like thinking, dude, there's just no way. But, um, I think I actually only put down a few decent laps because I didn't, I truthfully didn't know where the finish line was. Like I, <laughs> It was just my fault. I thought it was this big wall jump, but it happened to be like the ski jump. So okay. I think I was throwing away a ton of laps that I thought was fast. Like I would put it in and then I would stop halfway through. And yeah, it just turned out I wasn't doing anything. But uh, it actually made me really mad. Like, because I just want, it's not even that qualifying matters a lot, but it just helps me out mentally knowing kind of where I'm at. But I went out for the next one and I knew, I knew I just wanted a really, put in some laps but yeah I ended up second which which is fine Joel can have it <laughs> I'm right. still it's just like I want to get a, a top qualifier I think that would be really cool but yeah I knew I felt pretty dang good in it and uh um yeah I put one in pretty early which set me up for a, a good gate pick in the heat races yeah for sure I mean that's something that maybe doesn't get talked about a ton is like even though qualifying doesn't matter that much to a point like the, the confidence boost that that can give you, like it kind of just sets the tone for the day. So um, I totally get what, you're, get what you're saying there. And then, yeah, like going into the heat race, um, I mean, like your momentum just kept on going. Like you grab a really good start, you rip a good hole shot, you lead this thing wire to wire, right? Like holding yeah. off Chad, the six time champ. I mean, like I'm smiling ear to ear right now talking about it cause it's so cool. So was that like surreal for you? Yeah. So, um, after that second qualifier, I knew that, um, I had, I think I had first gate pick. So like I knew, you know, we also had a five minute, um, practice start session in the qualifier. So like we oh, did wow. a ton of starts beforehand and okay. every one of them that I did, like I nailed it. I just, the way the power was and like, the shift pattern and everything was just great. So that helped me out too, going into the moto. Like I knew my starts were there. Um, and then, yeah, I had first gate pick, uh, did exactly what I was practicing. Like it just, the start was perfect. The jump was good. And then I kind of blew a little wide, like Chad was on the right of me, but yeah, I blew a little wide and then Jeff kind of snuck in a little bit. And then we pretty much were like side by side down the first straightaway. And then um, there's like a wall jump, which, we were side by side on and I ended up edging them off. And then I put down like, I think a pretty few decent laps early and kind of had a lot of room. Like, um, you know, I wouldn't say checked out, but I had a couple corners where I was, was definitely safe. And then I, I knew that Chad was in second. Um, and yeah, I ended up making really uh, a few mistakes in a couple laps that dropped me back. And like, I saw Chad catching me and I'm like, this is just what I didn't want. I really wanted to, try to see if I could pull away um to, to set me up for the main but yeah Chad caught me and uh yeah I mean the the fat last few laps I saw that he was still gaining so he was riding really well like I I can't take anything away from that I just I really need to pick it up a little bit but yeah I ended up winning that heat race and uh it was just a good good heat 
Yeah, that was uh, that was a lot of fun to watch. I mean, even if you know he might have gained some time on you or whatever, like you did have a pretty big gap at one point. But I mean, it is Chad Weenan. Like, uh, you know, that was still like just to see you, Brandon. Because even like it's crazy how your mindset changes to where you're like this year. You're like I'm like I want to contend. Um, mm -hmm. But just to like see you in the mix at the front, like leading this thing and then like looking comfortable doing so. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. It just shows like where your mindset is at, you know, it's just. Uh, yeah. Like, the funny thing is like when I was racing, um, if I made a mistake or like exited a corner bad or just something like that, it's, it's kind of like, okay, I know Chad caught me right there. So like I have little spots where I'm like, okay, I think I probably could pull away right here. And then if I made a mistake or just rode slow in a, a corner, I know that, you know, it's the same thing with Joel. I know that they didn't. So like, that's the biggest thing is trying to, to minimize those. And, you know, I would come into a corner, maybe a little slow and be like, damn, I know Chad caught me right there, but yeah, yeah it was, it's pretty cool, man. Well, I mean, and, and you're racing, you're like, you're comparing yourself to guys that have been doing this for so long at such a high level. Like, that's the, that's the super impressive part. So you win the heat race, um, and then kind of moving on to the main event there. Um, you know, like after obviously how the day had went for you to that point, I'm sure you're thinking, you're thinking podium, maybe you're thinking, you know, a win even. So, um, I saw some pictures of you getting a killer jump. And, um, so I guess kind of take it from there on and tell yeah. us about your main event because man it like you looked like you were gonna have the whole shot and then i don't know did you just drive in a little deep yeah so right before actually the main i i said i was gonna win like i actually wanted to just win it i didn't want to i don't know why but i wanted to win the damn thing not even podium but um yeah and then we did the the sight lap um whole shot it was perfect again i had first gate pick so I it was just everything was perfect like if I wanted a day to win it was that day and uh Tim told me literally right when like the card went up he's like just don't blow the first corner I'm like yeah no I'm not gonna blow the first corner dude no I'm good you know and then okay. uh the card turned sideways I was really focused like I just felt really good and got a great jump uh and then I didn't want to let off until the people next to me let off like that was my I just didn't want to let off until um, they, they did because the way that left hander was like, if they ran it into the back of me, I would get stuck and we would be in a tangle up right. and yeah, I didn't let off fast enough. Like I just came in a little too hot and then blew the very first corner, which literally it was just such a bad feeling going from like the front to like, I don't know what I came out, but I just, I literally, um, it, I've never been that mad. I think like in a race, it just just because I needed to execute like I knew what I had to execute and I failed at it and that's what keeps you up at night but yeah well uh it's a long season ahead but I mean it was still a good day like but yeah. before I guess I go into that so what was that first corner like that was kind of a weird deal I really didn't think that they were going to end up doing that for the quads and the vintage bikes and stuff just because it just seemed I just assumed that that was going to be for supercross only, but then I guess they had no choice because they couldn't have you guys going into that, that wall jump single thing at a hundred miles an hour and however many guys wide. But right. um, yeah, it seemed like at least for ATVs, like there was some carnage in those starts for sure. Right. Yeah. We decided the carousel in the riders or the pro meeting, but it was like an S turn. I think the dirt bikes, it came really tight, like super tight to where, it was probably going to be more unsafe and we all decided to do the the carousel start which even though it was um you know it still caused some issues it was i think a lot better than what was okay. going to happen um, okay. okay but okay. it was definitely you. different like i was not ready to do the whole entire circle like i needed you have to pitch it but if you over pitch it you're gonna you know it, you just have to nail it and it's really hard to nail to be honest yeah for sure i mean if you get if you get sliding, that makes you susceptible to getting tagged or something by right. somebody else. Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah. So what did you think about the, how was the track? Cause the track was obviously tough to pass on, but, um, yeah. how was the track? Because you went from a, about mid pack, like just inside the top 10 
and you get up to fifth and you finish fifth. So, yeah. Um, I, to be honest, like I liked the track. I didn't think there was really, I don't know. I, I really liked it. Um, it's just, yeah, the whole not passing thing was the only thing I, I wasn't a fan of, but, um, and yeah, even the passes I made in the races, I, I couldn't have made them if they wouldn't have made mistakes. Like, I pretty much got the, the passes handed to me just from mistakes because if I would have tried to do anything, like we had to make contact pretty much regardless um, just because the way everyone funneled into the, the same lines and stuff. But um, other than that, the track was actually pretty fun. I thought it's just, yeah, the passing was kind of a bummer. It looks like a lot of fun. It looks like maybe it was a little faster and more spread out than Daytona's past. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was faster for sure. A lot less, I think, like a lot less sketchy in my opinion the tabletops were pretty easy and then um there wasn't any crazy whoops and yeah it was it was pretty um it's kind of pretty easy to be honest with you i kind of like that though because you're not trying to kill anybody at the first race you know right yeah everyone was uh pretty safe for the most part i think and it was it was a good track for us to race on i think you know the the um having you guys with the vintage bikes having the quads with the vintage bikes has end up ended up being a whole lot better deal than I think originally anticipated. Dude, the the crowd was actually pretty packed. Like, I was excited to race in front of everybody, and the way the track turns out, they, it's not like they demolished the track for us. And I don't think we do too much terrible damage for them. So, no, no. really, it's it's a nice combo. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I think uh, I think it went really well. The track looked looked really. It looked like a lot of fun as a as a bystander to it. And uh, being that you were the first one we're talking to here, I wanted to wanted to see uh, your thoughts on that. But yeah, you, I mean, there's no shame in kind of biding your time and being patient and getting uh, as many spots as you can. I mean, again, to get out of there with the top five, like, yeah, I mean, with how the day had went, um, I don't blame you for wanting, for wanting more, but uh, to get out of there with the top five, you know, I think that uh, you gotta, you gotta take it, right? Yeah, dude. I like I'm, I'm actually extremely disappointed, but I'm not just going to talk bad this whole time. I just, it's, you know, it, the only reason I'm so disappointed is because I, how confident I felt that I actually could win. Like the, the win was what I wanted. And then even if, like, say if I pulled the start, right, it was pretty hard to pass. So I knew that, you know, if whoever was in second had to make a move on me, that it would be difficult to, but yeah. yeah. And I'm just disappointed. I mean, even the hype about my qualifying and stuff, I don't think is necessary. Like, I don't, I don't think people should think that it's going to be an every, every time thing. It was just, I felt good that day. I think like, I don't want to get, you know, I'm definitely not going to get cocky about that because it was just a really good day and those days don't come too often. So I, I, uh, I don't think people should think that's going to be a, a, a thing out of me, but I'd really like to see if I can, can back it up. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was more like, so I'm watching all this play out and I'm watching like the social media hype and all this stuff, like gain momentum as you, you qualify second and you win the heat race. And, uh, I just, I thought it was really cool to see. Um, I think that that's like a great message that you're sending, like, Hey, let's yeah. like pump the brakes a little bit, but you also showed how you can hang. Right. So, I mean, I think uh, you got to be pretty proud of that. And like with all the momentum um, you kind of have now, like that's just got to make you that much more excited kind of going into the, into the races ahead, I would assume. Dude, you have no idea. Like, man, I'm just so freaking pumped. Like drive. Okay. I didn't sleep the night after the race because all I want to do is think about what I should have done different, et cetera. But now it's like, I just have so much dude I don't even know how to explain it man it's like I'm so damn excited just to be back racing and back with those guys and and just I don't know it makes the grind so much more yes. uh, just like intense I don't even know how to explain it dude but it's like I'm so excited now waking up and doing the routine that I do it's just like damn we're finally back racing well after and after so many months of like this monotonous like 
it's almost like there's a light at the end of the tunnel or this carrot out in front of you, but like it, it's barely getting any closer. And now that, yeah, you got something to show for it. You know, the stuff that you're doing is working. You have this good performance and now it's like, Hey, we're only a couple weeks away from the next one. Like, let's get back out there. So, so you're, I, I can like feel, I can feel the excitement in your voice. Yeah, dude. I, it's freaking, oh man. It's just, dude, let's, I, I mean, I hope Texas doesn't rain and whatnot, but yeah, I'm excited to go outside and see, uh, I want to see where I stand on an outdoor track. I know that's kind of the talk right now is yeah, Daytona was, it's a lot different than what we usually race on. So let's see if I can, you know, I, I want to see what I can do out there because yeah, like the, the talk is kind of funny seeing that, <laughs> you know, I, I know people think I'm, doing very well so far but yeah it was just Daytona dude I I gotta see what I can do outside for sure but I mean you don't see I mean we've been doing Daytona long enough that you don't see things change a whole heck of a lot like the guys that are at the front are at the front the guys that are you know in the middle are in the middle like that's normally how it works so like I'm pretty optimistic on it and uh yeah so but I'm excited too that was my next question was to see if you're ready to go outdoors and uh and yeah, I'm really excited about that. Dude, how sick does your bike look? Oh, dude, do you like it? I, oh my God, it looks so I really good. didn't know. I mean, I wanted to try to be kind of flashy, but not too flashy. And I like then, it. I like it how it's it's um, like nothing, nobody else looks like that. So it's easy to tell like who you are. But on, the, on like the little videos, like I was watching, like on Brandy's live feed or whatever, it makes you look like a Yamaha because it was so yeah. small. So even the guys on the radio were like, is that, is that, I don't know who they said, is that Chad Whedon or is that Thomas Brown or whatever? Yeah. And, uh, and I'm like, no, that's Brandon Hogue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The blue kind of makes it, oh, it probably, looks so good. Yeah. Probably looks kind of close to that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, really didn't know I don't have a reason behind that color I think I just wanted to do something different I was gonna go with like yellow or something but dude yellow is too much for me so I just went with with the like a teal yeah yeah I kind of got some of that teal in my graphics too I really really like that so uh yeah yeah hopefully uh hopefully we'll see more of that thing up front man I I was like so proud and, and just like watching it all play out. It was almost surreal. Even for me, you know, it was like, yeah. it was just, uh, it was so cool. So awesome well, I, job. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm, I really appreciate it, dude. I really do. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, you like, like uh, just to, just to, the progression has been so fast and now to see you kind of up there at the front, dicing it up, it's uh it's really cool to see and, and uh, with how hard you work and um, you know, it's pretty cool. I'm going to throw this last question in there too, is yeah. dude, you got a serious following. Like you got a lot of people cheering for you. Dude. Thanks. I, I really don't know how in the heck. <laughs> I mean, uh, actually after the, the qualifier, I think, cause I, I typically don't get on my phone um, in, at the race because I feel like I should just be there and try to take it all in yeah be pre um, be present yeah but dude my my watch is on my wrist and like whenever my watch is around my phone it'll vibrate okay and like dude i went in the trailer and i just had <laughs> it just was vibrating 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 and i'm like oh no these people and i would like read the you could read the screen on it and it would be like you're killing it and wow like great job and i don't know how that happened like but dude and even after the race, like after the heat race, I pulled off and I just heard a couple screams and just a couple screams like that rooting for me and stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah. Dude, I don't even know how to explain it. I, it's like that stuff means more to me than even showing up. Like the fact that people actually, you know, root for me. Yeah. And then I, I just, and then to like have, I mean, you still like won a heat race, like a pro heat race and then to do it in Daytona. Like, I just think that that's so cool. Yeah, it was I don't even know when I, when I had a clear track and man, I just have so many. Okay. One story real quick. Like this was just random. Uh, I was road biking and I had, okay. Um, like the way I was pacing and everything, I, I was just in a moment to where I was thinking about Daytona and okay, okay. I had a, I had a literally a dream, like a vision while I was biking about pulling the whole shot and like seeing a clear track. Okay. And then, it was literally deja vu, dude. I, 
I hit the, it was like after the wall jump, there's a tabletop and then it was a straightaway. Yep. I literally, that's what I visioned when I was biking. I mean, I bet my heart rate spiked to like 200, dude, because I, it was, it gave me chills like on the track that I had deja vu of doing this. It was just, dude. Call me a liar, bro. I don't. I'm telling you the truth. It was unreal. No, I, I, I can't imagine. And again, like I said it before, like you're the kind of guy that'll talk something into into existence, right? Like that's your nature. So it doesn't even come as a surprise. Like I, uh, I, I can't imagine that feeling to be in Daytona. It's, it's like you're on a 300 EX all over again. You know, like yeah. because there's people. I mean, I raced for a long time, right? Like. Uh, I'd never led a pro race. Can you imagine? Like, I can't even imagine the feeling, you know, like yeah. I, like leading pro-am for me was like, Oh my God, like everybody's right. watching, everybody's watching me right now, you know? So, right. um, yeah, that's so cool. And I, I, again, awesome job. I, like you were the talk of the sport, you know, for the better part of the day on Tuesday. And, um, Oof. you know, you had, you had goals, you're achieving them you had a dream and you're living it. And, and I'm just so proud of you for that. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I, I think the talk, dude, I, I love the talk about the ATV racing right now. Cause it's so like, dude, it's just, it's so awesome. I, dude, I love dude, it's better. It. It's better than ever. I swear. Yeah. Like, yeah, like last year going into Daytona, there was really nothing. And now like, dude, it's, it's just, it's kind of, it's so awesome, man. I love it. I love it. I think that like, there's more buzz around the sport right now than, than I can remember in, in a long time. And, um, dude, that class is so good and so stacked right now too. Like it's exciting. Yeah. That's why, that's why I don't want to, like, I don't want to hype myself up. Dude, if we are mid year and I'm clicking off really good results and stuff, I'll come back on and say, okay, maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm doing all right now, but right now I don't want to be like, Dude, Daytona was just, I just got, I, I had luck too. I had good luck on my side. But if I can start clicking off some good stuff throughout the year, dude, then I'll be like pumped. But, hey, you keep running those lap times and you keep, uh, you keep getting good starts and you'll be, you'll be right there all year long. I'm going to try, man. Seriously, thank you. But Well, awesome job again, Brandon. I'm, uh, again, I'm pumped for you. I'm so proud of you. Thanks for joining us and uh, best luck going forward. And we'll see you again soon. Hey, I greatly appreciate it, Cody. Thank you, man. All right, man. Good job. All right, guys. So pumped to get into this. Joining me to cover everything that happened in the wild Daytona ATV Supercross. Welcome back, Sean Taylor. Thanks for coming back on, Shawnee T. What's up, man? Thanks for having me back. And hot take hammy, Tyler Hamrick. Welcome back, mate. Yo, what's going on, my brother? What's up? Man, good, good to have you guys back on. Uh, crazy, exciting day of racing at Daytona, of course. There was so much anticipation coming into the event, and somehow it lived up to the hype. So um, was loving it Tuesday and loving it now, talking about it. Obviously, been, been anxiously waiting this. Um, you know, it truly was an amazing event, probably as much anticipated as the very first Daytona Supercross for the quads, I think. And it was truly a great time now to be an ATV motocross enthusiast. I think we could have just saw the most exciting ATV motocross race that, that I can remember seeing in a, in a long time. Yeah, it, it sounds like it was, it was pretty exciting. Um, sounds like a lot of stuff happened in the heat races. You had some, had a, had a, um, I guess a second, second year uh rider take a heat race win and um and then the, the champion the champion from last year ends up on the dirt on the ground uh in the heat too so uh things definitely started started to get exciting there at round one yeah no doubt i definitely agree with that a lot of shit that uh, happened i wasn't expecting to happen um especially when i seen joel or or not seen but heard that joel went down the first corner i kind of like wrecked all my predictions and then you got Brandon Hogue winning the heat race and then was it Alan Myers the other one so yeah pretty crazy how the whole day broke down yeah I'm excited to get into it because there was there was all kinds of unexpected things I think we we speculated where what was going to happen and where guys were going to finish and um but you knew that there was going to be things that happened that we obviously couldn't predict so it was uh like you had you had a number of guys 
and not enough slots for them to all fit in. So that was that was kind of the exciting part to sit back and watch how it played out. So let's get into this. The, the day starts with time qualifying. Everything is pretty status quo in the first one, I feel like. And then, um, cause actually like I get my workout in extra early that morning. So I can like literally be home. I'm in front of the, the, the computer. Like I got my phone going too, and I'm like tuned in for these time qualifiers. And, uh, yeah, the first one pretty standard, uh, it seemed like everybody was kind of where you expected them to be. Chad was fastest and, uh, and then, yeah, Q2 comes out and here comes Brandon Hogue, the Brandon Hogue that he told us to expect um, for 2020. He was on top for a while and, and Joel snuck by, um, but you know, Hogue qualified second fastest. And uh, that was probably the most notable story for me coming out of qualifying and uh, was almost like a precursor for the day. So um, kind of was like the first, you know, we've seen him qualify second, we heard him say he was going to be like, you know, trying to be up there and mix it up. But uh, that was kind of the first surprise of the day for me because he was on top for a long time and it was by a, by a, you know, a decent little margin there. So uh, it was a good start to the day for Brandon Hogue for sure. Yeah. I didn't get to, I didn't watch the qualifying or get to see it. I tried looking for it at one point when I was on my computer and I couldn't, I couldn't find it. I was just kind of going off of, um, off Instagram, like what you guys were posting and, um, what other people and yeah, for the first qualifier, um, you know, talking about Brandon, he was, you know, what I'd say halfway down or so down the list. And then the second one come out and he's second. And I was like, Holy shit. You know, it's, I think he qualified well at Loretta Lynn's and then yep. to see him qualify second fastest here, I, I think you're probably going to be seeing Brandon, uh, you know, being, you know, maybe taking a top qualifier spot here sometime throughout the season, but you definitely um, expect him to be, be up there every, every time. And it's, it's hard to throw down a, throw down a heater lap. I always struggled to, to be able to do that. And so, yeah, it's, you're moving out there if you're qualifying top three with those guys. Absolutely. He, uh, he came out and was on fire right away. And uh, yeah, it was, it was exciting. Like I said, he, he said that he was going to kind of show that speed and, um, and he did that right from the jump. And again, like he looked so comfortable doing it. He just uh, looked to be one of the guys right away. Um, did anything stand out to you, Hammy, from qualifying other than, other than Brandon? Um, again, like everybody seemed to kind of, uh, kind of slide in where you probably expected them, but yeah, uh, yeah. exactly. That's what I was saying. I thought even both qualifiers were kind of like normal to me because we've seen Hogue put down a good qualifier in Loretta. So when I seen that he was second overall, it really didn't shock me too much because, you know, he could have latched. I wasn't there. So he may, he could have latched onto Joel that, that lap that he put down. And I mean, from what I've seen on Instagram, he has been, been fast this year so I mean I'm sure riding a new bike a race bike so he's probably ripping but nothing really crazy stood out um other than and then uh like maybe seeing Jeffrey down seventh fastest but everyone's times are so close that right you know exactly yeah tenths of a second will drop you four spots so but 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 you would still think he'd be in the top four yeah, I mean, we talked about the big four. He's obviously one of those guys. And, uh, yeah, it's interesting because, you know, Hoag, uh, I know he probably wanted the top qualifier because he said to me on the podcast once before that that's a goal of his, is to be fastest qualifier. But, yeah, the other, the other, uh, the other thing that I would have probably noted, too, was Jeffrey. But um, being that it was qualifying, being that on that tight little track that everybody's pretty close track didn't look super technical. I didn't think, um, looked like a lot of fun to ride, but not real technical. So that obviously, I mean, you're only seeing so much of a margin, maybe four seconds, maybe, um, between kind of the top guys to the bottom half guys. And, um, like that's less than you see on a normal track from front to back. So yeah, maybe that was to be expected. And, and, you know, so coming out of qualifying, um, didn't really clarify anything for me. I don't think as far as what we were going to see and getting into the heat race, uh, action, then heat one, you know, we were just talking about Hulk. He comes out, he's leading the thing and, and ends up winning it, uh, leads it wire to wire, holds out the six time champ in the process and uh, doing it in qualifying is one thing, right. But then doing it in a race, that's a whole nother animal. And that's when I kind of realized like this could be a different branded Hulk. 
yeah, into you know, I don't know how many laps them they ran in the heat races. Um, six, but two, six, six laps, but yeah. Uh, yeah, hold off the hold off the you know past years champ like that. And I mean, it seemed like he had a you know I don't think Chad was really on him you know a whole lot really you know like basically pushing around the track. It seemed like Brandon was holding his own out there, and um, yeah, it was I can't imagine how he felt you know, taking the checkered flag and then coming off the track and going back to the, going back to the truck and just realizing like, Hey, I just beat, just beat Chad Ween in a heat race here in the, uh, in the opening round. So yeah, that was he, cool. he ripped the whole shot and got a nice little gap and uh, Chad had to pass a couple guys, but, uh, yeah. but I mean, he won a heat race in Daytona. Yeah. So that's the gotta be pretty, pretty cool. Um so, and, and I would like to state that I correctly predicted, and I'll quote, we will see some flashes of brilliance out of Brandon Hogue. So, so uh, I'll uh, take, I'll take, <laughs> I'll take credit for that after, after the leading qual. Uh, was that like one out of five or right. six? Yeah. <laughs> Being that I, I, uh, I had him predicted to do something special. He leads qualifying for a while, ends up second, wins the heat race. So uh, jokes aside, super impressive. Um, again, to see him out in front of, of Chad and, and yeah, I think, you know, it wasn't like Chad was all over him. I mean, he wasn't holding up Chad or anything like that. He definitely held his own. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's going to be going to be. And Janusa and Rastrelli were in that heat too. Exactly. Exactly. And they had a nice little battle going on. They had a nice little battle going on of their own, but yeah, they weren't, uh, they weren't right up by, by, by Hogan and Chad there. Definitely not an easy win, and he made it look pretty damn easy. He looked yeah. good, so he's going to be exciting to watch all season long. Um, so, yeah, like I stated, that, that first one went uh, went Hoag, Chad, Janusa, Rastrelli, right? That's how it went, Hammy? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how uh, that first heat went, and that was a big one for Brandon Hoag. Um, before we get into the other heat race, I think you're going to want to hear from this guy. All right, our next guest is a first-timer here on the podcast, and we're so pumped to have him on. Brought to you by SSI Decals, making your identity stick with championship-level graphics. It's Alan Myers, fresh off his first career pro podium. What's up, Alan? Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Dude, can you, can you believe what happened the other day at Daytona? Like, does somebody need to pinch you right now? <laughs> yeah, it was definitely, definitely insane. Um, you know, I didn't feel – too great in qualifying and uh, I just got out to a good start in my heats and my mains and kind of just rode my own race really you know I, I felt really confident coming in you know I did a lot of training I put a lot of work in so I was really excited with how it happened yeah I mean you had a you had a killer day before we go too far so what were what were you like your goals coming into Daytona like what did you expect of yourself prior to going racing or whatever I really I didn't have the the goals that I kind of set for myself last year. My uh, my main goals are honestly just to have fun with it and uh, be a better person, better rider than I was the day before. And just you know, go day by day. Okay, yeah, because you know you never know. Like I mean, everybody kind of there's a feeling out process. Um, yeah, but yeah, I was curious to to see. Uh, you know, what you were thinking, I guess, before seeing yourself stack up against everybody else. But I mean, you were fast right from the rip, like, you know, eighth in qualifying, but you know, then in the heat race, like you rip the whole shot and kind of hold off Thomas Brown, lead that thing wire to wire pretty much. So take us through that. Yeah. So, so qualifying, I'm, I'm never really strong in qualifying. There's just something about the race that kind of, you know, I always tell people like I work, I work better under pressure and, uh, qualifying you know there's no pressure there for me so I kind of like I take the easier route I guess I don't push myself to the limits but yeah that that first heat race um uh Joel had a mishap in the first corner uh I came out like fourth or fifth actually out of the second corner and just kind of rocketed by everybody hit the first little uh wall jump right there and got the first and yeah uh Thomas had a few people to pass he made his way up to me and he had a way faster pace, but, you know, I kind of had control of the situation and I kind of rode my own race and didn't kind of worry what was going on behind me. I didn't want to ride over my head or anything like that. Yeah. You looked really comfortable doing so. And I can't imagine, 
um, like how good, obviously the wind must've felt, but then the confidence boost that comes from that, you know, kind of heading into the main, like that had to be, that had to be a pretty good feeling and it had to be like a, like a wave of momentum almost. Oh yeah, it definitely was. Yeah. Coming back to the pits after that, it was just insane. You know, see my, my parents smile ear to ear, you know, it was just awesome. Everyone from all of my pits coming to congratulate me is awesome. I mean, yeah. to, to win, to win, it doesn't matter if it's a heat race, like you just won a yeah. pro race, you know? So that's, I, I can't imagine that feeling. Yeah, it's it's a crazy feeling, you know, but uh, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, you know, you got you got one more to prove yourself for the day. You know, somebody could say that that first win was kind of a fluke, but to do good twice in a row in one day, you know, that's kind of just proves the hard work that went in this off season. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, like you don't, you still don't get gifted a, a heat race win. But uh, no, no, not at all. Not, at all. <laughs> not against how how fast everybody is right now. So then, take us through the main event. You you rip another good start, which is obviously key um, on that track, and you stay right up front until the finish. So so tell us about it. Yeah. So the the main event it was uh, it wasn't really that intense as. Uh, as in the past, I guess, like that, you know, I kind of had some breathing room, but uh, that first lap was pretty crazy, actually. Uh, there's a lot of, like, passing going along, and then the first lap, uh, I made a mistake right before the finish line, and uh, Joel got around me, and I kind of just, like, hooked onto them, hooked onto their speed a little bit. They had a little bit of more sprint speed and got away, but uh, for the most part, for, like, the whole race, I kind of stayed, like, in the same distance, and uh Bryce Ford was behind me. He had a really good pace, but uh, he spun out in the one corner, and I can tell that he just didn't have the momentum to come back and and uh, catch me. So I kind of just calmed down there, you know, cruised the rest of the moto, and uh, I saw Thomas there that last lap on the off the bike. And man, I when I passed him, I, I told my dad when I came off the track, I was like, man, I went completely cold. I was like, I cannot believe that I, I'm about to do this. And it was like five corners from the finish line. I was freaking out. Oh my gosh. I can't, I can't even imagine, but yeah, you were kind of in, kind of in no man's land. Like you weren't that far away from the top guys at all, but you weren't right there in that three rider battle and you had a gap yeah. kind of after to Bryce after he spun out. So yeah, you were kind of in like no man's land, but man, you like had a really good pace going. And then, yeah, I can't imagine you, you cross the line in third, like take us through that moment. Like, what are you even thinking about? Oh, it was, it was just insane. I mean, the first, the first thing I did, you know, I ran up to my dad, gave him a huge hug. I was crying. My dad was crying. And I just started running down the fence looking for my mom. That's all I wanted to do is just give my mom a hug and couldn't find her. So I had to get on my bike and go find her. <laughs> but oh, it was just, so cool. it was insane, you know. I just, I was so happy. Everyone was so happy. It was just awesome. Yeah, that's, uh, you, like, there's, you never get to feel the first one again, right? So, I mean, oh, no. like, nothing will be like the first, like the first podium. So that's so special. And, yeah. Like that, that rush of emotions is what all of us as competitors live for. So, I mean, there's no better feeling than that. And, and I can't imagine like the jolt of excitement and energy that must create for the, for like all the races ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And especially to, for me to do it the first round, you know, everybody's watching, everyone's seeing where, where everyone's been. And for me to do that the first round, it was just a, it's a huge confidence booster, but at the same time, it's like, you know what, I got to go back, put the work in. I have to kind of respond for Texas, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, for sure. I just, uh, but it's almost like you, you want, I, I mean, I can't like, you gotta not want, you almost like want to carry that feeling you just had from that race, like for a little while. Right. Cause it fuels you. Oh, the yeah. races ahead obviously like you want this feeling again now yeah oh yeah know? yeah that's that's the whole that's why we do it it's like you know, being, most, of us, most yeah. of us don't get to do it for a paycheck so you know that podium feeling is why we do it so that's what it's what it's all about for sure yeah. so take my take my listeners um through the the switch from the program you're with before where you had you know so much success obviously to to doing something different for this year is that like is it kind of like your own deal or is it being with a new team like just take us through that yeah so it's i'm on a new team this year it's not uh it's not my team i'm a part of a team 
Okay. But yeah, so I made the decision a few weeks after the last Ironman race to, I was actually just going to ride on my own and do my own thing. And um, so I started doing some local races and just kind of staying with like racing, you know what I mean? And trying to stay on the bike. And I, I hooked up with a few guys from the local races, Todd West. And uh, he came to me and talking about trying to start a new team up. And I didn't hear from him for a few months. And then uh, all of a sudden, you know, I started doing these indoor races and he's like, all right, like, let's get you a contract. Let's go. Started, you know, getting the team together. And it's just uh, like we clicked so well. I feel like, you know, we're all kind of from the same background, like hardworking families. And um, we just really click well. And I'm super excited. There's a couple kids on the team that I'm getting to train this year. So I'm really excited about that. And it's just it's just great energy and just great motivation. That's awesome. It's a, it's probably uh it's exciting move for you to kind of, to, I mean, kind of doing something different, you know, like something different yeah. can kind of, can kind of re-energize a person. Was there any, I mean, obviously you were with the last group, like you were with Travis Moore since, since the beginning of your success. Right. So was, was there any anxiety that came with doing your own thing or was it just excitement of a fresh start? Um, yeah, well, you know, and I'm like not, and I'm not, and I'm not trying to get too personal. I was just, yeah, I, I was yeah, just yeah. curious. Yeah, no, I'd like to give uh, Travis some credit for, for my early on success, and uh, you know, obviously, I wouldn't be where I am here today. But um, you know, I think all good things come to an end, and uh, that's just kind of how it went. The past two years on the team, I was just super stressed out. You know, not really having a lot of fun with it, and. Uh, you know, at the end of last year, I, I just said, you know, like, I, I need to change. Something's got to change. And I decided to kind of do it on myself. And then that team deal came up. So, yeah. Uh, that's exciting. You're you're off to – you couldn't be off to a better start, right? So, uh, I mean, to just see how good of a day you had at Daytona and how comfortable you looked doing it um, just looked like a, like a whole new Alan Myers. Yeah, so, uh, so like, when I – when I first came down to Florida, I was, I was down here for about two months, just pretty much all by myself. Just, you know, my parents or my mechanic or nobody was here. Nobody else was here riding yet. And I just, okay. you know, I'd call my dad and be like, dad, like I'm doing so good. I'm riding awesome. Like I feel amazing. I'm doing 35 and 40 minute motos. Like I'm just killing it. And, um, you know, he'd tell me he was proud of me and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, I'm really glad I got to show off you know, my hard work that I've really been putting in and I'm really glad of that the feeling of that hard work paying off is, you know, it's none other. It's insane. No, you're exactly right. When you can, uh, in anything in life, when you can put forth that kind of effort and that kind of dedication and that kind of sacrifice and all these things and kind of reap the benefits of it and see, see you succeed. Um, there's no better feeling like there's no better feeling. And, and again, to see the pictures of you hugging your dad and, uh, you know, the, with the champagne bottle and stuff, I mean, I only ever did it, you know, in pro-am, but like, I, I can, I, I can relate to that feeling a little bit. And, uh, it just, it looks, looks amazing. looks like an amazing feeling. Like I said, the, the pictures of you and your dad hugging each other and your family and all those things, like that's what this is all about. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to have it kind of is like our own, our own deal, really, you know, it's we kind yeah. of brought it back to like the grassroots this year and to have that sort of success with it that early on, you know, it's, it's, you couldn't, I couldn't have a better outcome, you know, I was just super stoked with it. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Yes. Um, again, and I went through the same thing again, I, I never got a pro podium, whatever, but at the beginning of my career, I was doing kind of the team thing and stuff like that. And we kind of cut more and more people out of it. And when it was just me and my family, that was the most fun I ever had. And then it seemed like as soon as the fun was back in it, like I had the most success too. Yeah. Yeah. Like even, even on my podium, you know, they asked, you know, what, what I was like thinking out there on the track. And I just, I told him, you know, my only intentions were to go out there and have fun and every single lap out there for me was just an absolute blast. And, you know, to have that kind of feeling back to where like I, I had completely fallen back in love with the sport is just, it's amazing. You know, I get to do what I love again and I'm just happy with it. 
as soon as you enjoy doing it, it's, it doesn't feel like work anymore. So, uh, exactly, yeah. again, Alan, amazing job at Daytona. Congrats again on the podium and, uh, the heat race win. Obviously those are both two huge things. Um, again, like you look so comfortable doing it. It makes us kind of certainly like expect more of that, you know, for the rest of the season ahead. So, um, again, great job and, uh, let's do it again and, and get you back on here again to talk about it. Heck yeah. Thank you. All right, pal. Congrats again. Thanks so much. We'll get right back to the show, but now a quick word from our sponsors. And now, please stand up and make some noise for our title sponsor, CST Tires. CST Tires and their Pulse MXR Tire have completely overtaken the ATV market. Used by Thomas Brown to clinch a third straight Quad Cross of Nations title, by Nick Janusa as he dominated the Montreal Supercross, and myself, Cody Jansen, as I rode my Pulse MXR fronts and white label soft compound rears to a 2019 national championship in the Junior 25 Plus class. The Pulse MXR tire, available in soft and standard compounds, offers the highest level of traction, most predictable cornering, and superior wear characteristics than the competition. Join the takeover or prepare to be beat by someone who did. CST Tires, where passion meets the ground. Check them out at csttires.com today. Anybody that I've gotten to try them, I've heard nothing but positive things back. We're proud to be Team Blue Crew here at the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast. Why choose Yamaha? Look no further than Chad Wienan's six championships in the past eight seasons aboard his Yamaha YFZ450R. Not to mention Yamaha is the leading OEM supporter of ATV racing, and their support of this podcast proves it. For the 2020 ATVMX season, Yamaha's Blue Crew Racer Support Program will offer payout and prize opportunities, including the chance to win a brand new YFC 450R. For more information, head to YamahaOutdoors.com and follow them on social media at Yamaha Outdoors today. For over 150 years, Valvoline has led the charge by being dedicated to constant improvement and innovation across all disciplines of racing. Valvoline has sponsored some of the greatest names in motorsports, and for the better part of a decade, I've been fortunate enough to be a part of the historically great Team Valvoline. From my commuting vehicles to small engines, race quads, and everything in between, I trust nothing but Valvoline in all of my equipment. I've experienced increased function and durability, as well as longer life expectancy thanks to Valvoline's array of products and lubricants. Since 1866, Valvoline has been focused on bettering your experience, whether on road, on track, or anywhere in between. Upgrade to Valvoline today and check them out at Valvoline.com. SSI decals is a name that is synonymous with ATV racing and synonymous with success. An offshoot of their parent company that was established in 1947, SSI first took shape from owner Ian Harris's passion for ATVs. After making number plates and decals for riders like Chad Whedon, the company quickly took off. Today, you couldn't imagine a to b Motocross without SSI decals. The graphics maker now supports all the top teams at ATV Motocross, as well as GNCC, Work Series, Pro Motocross and Supercross, Canadian Pro Motocross, Short Course Off-Road Trucks, UTVs, Snowcross, and, oh yeah, six-time NHRA World Champion Clay Milliken. No project is too big or too small for SSI decals, making your identity stick with championship-level graphics, SSI decals. The Digging Deep ATVMX podcast is brought to you in part by DID Racing Chain and their 520 ATV2 chain. This patented X-ring chain boasts a steel alloy construction for reduced weight, increased strength, and a longer chain life, making it the optimal ATV racing chain. Pick up an ATV2 chain today at your local dealer or wherever DID chains are sold. Wherever you go, go with DID. We're pumped to bring on new partner, Namira Technologies. Since 2001, Namira has led the charge in the ATV and side-by-side market, covering more applications than anyone else in the industry. Namira's advanced piston technology uses a NASA-exclusive aluminum alloy that helps to reduce expansion rates, allows for tighter tolerances, and leads to higher overall engine performance for your machine. For more information about Namira's wide offerings of pistons, rings, gaskets, and industry-leading top-end repair kits, visit your local dealer or online at www.namira.com. Namira Technologies, pistons with an attitude. We are proud to announce our partnership with Avocado Green Mattresses. We all know that sleep and rest are an important part of any athlete's routine. Avocado's line of natural mattresses and pillows provide exactly the support you need to ensure you perform at your best while you're doing the best for the planet. 
The Avocado mattress offers zoned back support with an internal support unit, meaning whether you are recovering from a hard day of riding or relaxing on a Sunday morning, you will be experiencing next level comfort. You can rest in peace knowing the components in your mattress and pillows are non-toxic, natural, and sustainably sourced. And getting your Avocado Green mattress could not be any easier. They offer a 100 night sleep trial, free shipping, free return pickup, and a 25 year warranty. And if that wasn't enough, rest assured knowing that they have a five star rating by verified customers, including some of our Digging Deep staff. Step up your sleep game by visiting avocadomattress.com. We are proud to announce our newest show sponsor, Gripped Gloves. Gripped is an ATV rider owned and operated brand with the rider in mind and the goal of keeping costs affordable. The Michigan based family operation recognizes riders' desire to showcase their identity. Owner David Payne's love for eccentric colorways and crazy patterns shows in his product something not often found in the work of big manufacturers. Here to push stereotypes and limitations, Grip's drive is to produce a glove with cool colors and designs that won't break the bank. With comfort and quality as key motivators, this family affair is constantly working on the next innovative and improved glove. Get a grip on life, join the Gripped movement because no one wants a bland glove. Check them out today at grippedgloves.com. Use discount code DIGGINGDEEP10 to save at checkout. That's G-R-I-P-T gloves.com. If you were to guess, on average, how many days people in the United States have to wait to see a doctor, what would you say? Americans have to wait around 29 days to see a doctor in major U.S. cities. If you're dealing with a condition like erectile dysfunction, you want treatment ASAP. That's why our friends at Roman have spent years building a digital platform that can connect you with a licensed doctor in your state from the comfort of your own home. Roman makes it convenient to get the treatment you need on your schedule. Just grab your phone or computer, complete a free online visit, and you'll hear back from a U.S. licensed physician within 24 hours. And if the doctor decides that treatment is right for you, Roman's Pharmacy can ship your medication to you with free two-day shipping. You also get free unlimited follow-ups with your doctor anytime you have questions or want to adjust your treatment plan. With Roman, there are no commitments and you can cancel anytime. So if you're struggling with ED, go to GetRoman.com slash digging for a free online visit and free two-day shipping. That's GetRoman.com slash digging for a free online visit and free two-day shipping. We are also pleased to announce our partnership with Bronco ATV and UTV Components. Bronco has been an industry leader in replacement hard parts and accessories for all makes and models for over 15 years. With a catalog that includes a full line of electrical components, engine internals like rods and cylinders, all the way down to suspension parts and bearing kits, Bronco is your hard parts source for whatever you need for whatever you ride. Available exclusively through distributors around the world, visit your local dealer or online at broncoatv.com. We are also supported in part by Evans Waterless Power Sports Coolant. The best power sports coolant on the market, Evans prevents overheating and boil over so you never have to worry about harming your engine or having a premature end to your ride due to overheating no matter what the condition. Designed for use in ATVs, UTVs, motorcycles, snowmobiles and more, use what the pros use. Upgrade to Evans today. The Digging Deep ATV MX podcast is also sponsored by DP Brakes. A longtime supporter of ATV racing and the world leader in centered brake technology, DP has been dominating the ATV world for decades by supporting the best four-wheeled racers on the planet. 2020 is no different with an impressive lineup including AMA ATV Pro Class champion Joel Hetrick and his Phoenix Racing Honda teammates. Myself, Cody Jansen, and my 2019 Junior 25 Plus National Championship. Baldwin Motorsports' Nick Janusa, Wesley Wolf, Dylan Tremellen, and his 940 racing team. Troy Hill, and more in ATV Motocross. In GNCC Racing, DP has 16 of the top 17 pros heading into 2020. This includes the champ Walker Fowler, Bryson Neal, Chris Borich, Cole Richardson, Jared McClure, Adam McGill, and more. These riders continue to appreciate the high performance and impressive durability that their DP brakes have to offer, products that ultimately help place them on the top step of the podium. Available at www.dp-brakes.com, purchase at your local dealer, or even message the show for their contact info today. What are you waiting for? Join the best ATV riders on the planet on DP Brakes. Forworks Carbon's innovative lightweight products include top-notch seat covers, carbon fiber and plastic hoods, tank covers, exhaust shields, shock guards, and much more. 
Whether you have an ATV, UTV, or snowmobile, 4Works has goodies that will make you salivate. I trust 4Works for increased function and a sexier look. 4Works Carbon, always working hard to bring high-quality, innovative parts to the market. Check them out today. Now back to the show. All right, so as you heard there, the sophomore dominance continues now with Alan Myers in the in the heat two. Alan Myers holds off Thomas Brown to win heat two. Um, this one was a little more surprising for me. I feel like you know we we were on the show. We talked a lot about Hogue and expecting big things. Alan was one of those guys, at least for me, where I didn't know where he was going to slide in. It was like I didn't know even if he was necessarily going to be in that group with the Bryce Fords, Brandon Hogue, Wesley Wolf, Nick Janusa. I didn't know he comes out in the heat race and, uh, and yeah, he, he puts it down and, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, it. we kind of, we didn't really talk about him in the, you know, in the prediction episode or, you know, the pre-race episode. Um, we briefly spoke that he is, I think he'd separated and kind of went on his own away from, uh, uh, Travis Moore's team so we weren't really sure what to, uh, what to expect from him but I mean clearly clearly he proved me wrong I wasn't expecting him you know to you know, pull out a win like that and hold off T Brown um, so yeah good for him and same you know same thing coming you know coming in as a rookie and going off the pulling off the track after taking the checkers and beating somebody like T Brown straight up is you know something to be proud of there to at the opening round. Yeah, that was uh, pretty crazy. I kept waiting for Thomas to make a move on him, but Myers wasn't budging. And uh, like like Sean said, we really didn't speak much about him, and I wasn't expecting him to be a, a top five guy, honestly. And I think he was probably the biggest shocker to me for Daytona overall. And we'll talk about like the main event, I'm sure, later. But uh, yeah, that's a big win on Daytona 500's uh, course, like. You can't get no better than that to start your season out. Like, you know that you can run with the big dogs. Absolutely. And, and again, like, I, it's not that I was trying to not cover the guy. I just right. – I didn't know exactly where he was going to fit in with the changes to his program and, and all these things. It was like, again, I mean, he, he was the second best rookie last year behind Hoag, but it just didn't seem like he was quite at Hogue's level at the end of the year. So I didn't know where to have him slot in. And uh, I know Bryce was in second for, for a second there. And uh, yeah, Thomas gets into second in the heat race is pressuring um, Alan Myers and, and Alan comfortably looked like he just kind of did his thing and held him off. And uh, yeah, that was, that was exciting. It was a strong move. And again, like just, you know, you can kind of, it does the, a person can do the eye test, right? On if you look comfortable doing something or if it looks like you're hanging on for dear life. And he looked comfortable in that, in that heat race win. Didn't seem to be, didn't to be rattled that he was, you know, that he was out front beat, you know, beating some, some fast guys. I mean, if that, in my, in my opinion, if that was me, I probably in my mind, mm -hmm. like, you know, put down some smooth laps, let's go, but also know like, I know Joel Hetrick's in this heat race. I know Thomas Brown's in this heat race. So it's only a matter of time before these guys are going to come freight training by me, you know? Right. So, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that was exciting. And you know that that was in the back of his head. So um, you just mentioned him. He was in this heat race, Joel Hetrick. Uh, where was he? Well, there was a, there was a first turn incident. Joel flips on the whole shot. Um, he remounts, got up to sixth. Um, I guess, to, to get into the first little bit of the, of this incident, you know, I saw the video. It was hard to tell if Joel, if, if Thomas got into the back of him, that was who was on the inside of him. It looked like maybe, maybe Joel, you know, was starting to slide and maybe Thomas tagged him and, and kind of started to slide a little more. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess what I would say is, you know, I, I think either way, like it's a, it's a whole shot incident. The things happen like, any racer, we know how these things happen. It's obviously misfortunate, but uh, but the biggest thing was that Joel was okay. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a good start to his to his day or his season. Obviously, not the way he wanted to start it. No, I yeah, I don't think, and I would have never predicted uh, you know to have Joel end up on the ground there in the first turn, first race of the season. Um, and yeah, like you said, you think it was a uh, you know possible as a racing incident I would probably say it was a racing incident um 
everybody's um, uh, what's the how what's the word I'm looking? Everybody's it's nervous. A, it's a controversial topic too. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's the, from what you know, from what we know, yeah. Um, but the, you know, the way the turn was, you know, it kind of looped all the way around. They did basically a, a complete circle. But um, you know, good thing was is Joel was able to get back up on the quad and get going and you know get it back up to a sixth place. Not ideal, you know, gate pick uh, for him. And I'm sure he was sure he was pretty, you know tore up about that and not wanting to not wanting to start out the season on you know on the ground so absolutely I did um Brandon Hogue told us that they elected to do the carousel hole shot there um which I didn't predict that I wouldn't have predicted that that we're going to run that for the quads right but they did that for the quads instead of like a S turn chicane thing that they were doing for the vintage bikes. So they elected in the riders meeting or whatever to oh, do the so, oh, that's good. To do yeah, the carousel good. instead because it would be better for the four wheelers. Because if yeah. you looked how the track was laid out, if they would have had them go right from that right to that single thing, that would have been carnage in itself. No, so that wasn't it. That made no. a little more sense because I wouldn't have but want to guess that they were going to do the loop around circle um, prior to the event. And then after Brandon said that, that made a little more sense. Um, okay. But again, like first corner incident, I don't think, uh, I mean, it's like, you could say that like things just happened in the first corner. You couldn't do something on purpose. You couldn't plan something ahead of time to do something on purpose in a first corner, whatever. So um, first corner incident, it just wasn't a good start to the day for, for Joel, obviously. Um, then I don't know that anything else was that notable in that heat race. It was Alan, Alan Myers, uh, Thomas Brown, um, Bryce Ford, and then Thomas got up to, or uh, I'm sorry, Joel got up to sixth, makes it. That was key for him because that at least put him on the front row. And, uh, and yeah, so other than that, um, I don't have anything else from that heat race to you guys. You got anything no. from there, Hammy? No, nope, no, nope. I, I agree with you guys. I think that whole shot was a racing incident for sure. Um, and from the pictures, it looked like, like Joel would have had that whole shot, like pretty easily from the pictures that you could see, looked, like everyone's kind of like he, behind him. It looked okay. like he was front. I thought it was sure. kind of turned. Right. He, I, go ahead. I just thought when he, the, I mean, I guess the pictures that I saw was the one obviously of him, you know, coming off the bike and it, it looked like that he was, you know, out front, but possibly there were, you know, there's a couple guys that were on the outside of him, which, you know, if you're on the track had been to the right, I think is how I, I saw it. But, um, right. but I think, like you said, I think, uh, you know, it's, who initiated the slide, right? Did Joel initiate this slide or did Thomas get into him a little bit and help the slide? Yeah. Either way though, either way, not going to feed into any controversy here because I nope. don't think there is one. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a, it's a racing first corner incident. We've all been yep. through it. So um, yep. Yep. moving on to the main event then, um, you know, I, I truly did not know what to expect at this point. Main, right. Everybody transferred to the main. Everybody transferred. Okay. Yep. They put a couple guys on the back row. We'll get into that. Um, but yeah, like going into the main event, I didn't still know what to expect because everything was so crazy. Um, you know, I don't know that anybody really knew what to expect kind of judging off of social media, you know, with the sophomores winning both heat races, which obviously I don't think anybody would have predicted, especially both of them. And then, you know, Joel, in my mind, I'm kind of factoring in that he's not going to have a very good gate pick. That kind of throws a wrench into things. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there was just all over the board, there was, there was storylines and a lot of kind of uh, not knowing what to expect. So, but as much as I say that, it's like that saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And on lap one, the typical podium contenders are one, two, three. Thomas Brown's leading, Chad's in second, Joel Hetrick's in third, and then they were followed by Alan Myers and Bryce Ford. That was your top five. But the, those big three, Thomas Brown, Chad Weenan, and Joel Hetrick are one, two, three um, right from the jump. Yeah, I, 
unfortunately for me, I, uh, I was, I kept looking at the clock, like, all right, it's going to be coming on. I need to tune into it. Brandy's going to have it on. Next thing I know it's 10 after two. I got busy and I look, I'm like, Oh my God. So I turned it on. So they were halfway, um, okay. halfway through the race there. So I, I, I missed the start. And, oh man. Uh, yeah. So I think where I where was at, it was, yeah, it was one, two, and three, um, was kind of reading some comments and there some people were talking about Jeffrey. I'm not sure if something happened to him right initially off the start or yeah well yeah so so jeffrey i saw some pictures um of jeffrey getting piled into from the back and it must have bent up the back of his machine enough that he was the machine was unrideable um so he did so he made one lap and he and the quad was sitting there on the side of the track um but yeah i'll tell you before we get into it i guess any farther i'll tell you my setup is I had my computer on and that was giving me the live timing and scoring. I had my phone propped up on the computer with Brandy's live feed going on. And I had Rodney on quad radio on yep. my, on my playing off my phone. So I was like all set up and I had live timing and scoring the little video feed and uh, in the radio. So it, I was like, I was it, set. It was mint. You know, I'd have been per- perfect. Yeah, set up I, I didn't have it like that, man. Everybody, no, everybody, close. everybody from the shop is like in my work bay, uh, watching my little setup for the main event. So it was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah so that was cool. But, uh, but yeah, so the, those guys were, were one, two, three. And, and even with, uh, with Alan and fourth Bryce and fifth, um, there was really no changes in the top five at all until Chad snuck by Thomas and that was about with five laps to go. But the thing I'm like, the, the pace of those three guys was so fast that it wasn't like there was a couple times you'd see Joel flash on the screen and he'd be up on Chad. And then, you know, there would be a lap where he'd fall back and then Chad would be up on Thomas, but ne- none of the guys were holding up each other. Like they were all going the same pace. Seemed like there was a little distance between them and, uh, and yeah, Chad snuck by, Thomas there and uh and then quickly as soon as Chad got into the lead he put down some Gone. burners and and in two or three laps he like had a four second lead and to me Chad looked stronger than ever as soon as he got Good. out into the into yeah. the lead there so um so that was impressive. I don't know if you guys uh, want to comment on that, but man, did Chad look good when he got into the lead. And 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 I will mention too, like Thomas looked uh, like I just the whole mentioned shot there. was great. Whole shot was great, and then and then again, like the pace he was running, he was like all three of those guys were running the same pace for those first nine laps. So did Thomas? Did Thomas make a mistake there? Did, did Chad get by, or was it just Chad just able to, you know, kind of muscle muscle his way around and go? I believe Thomas said that he made a mistake. Um, I don't know if he missed a shift or there was maybe a reference of something like that. But uh, yeah, it looked like Thomas maybe made a little mistake and Chad snuck by. But then even after that, I thought maybe you'll see a little urgency from Joel. <clears throat> and I don't know that you really saw that. Like it looked like the like the distance kind of still remained the same um, between those two guys. And then then what do you what do you got, Hammy? You're just kind of signaling. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think when you said urgency, I think once Chad got by Thomas, like in my head, I knew it was over because like I was watching the laps. It was two seconds and four seconds and two laps that he put on second place. No, no, so no. I think I, so Joel that, was thinking, oh, okay. like I need okay. to get by him like right now, or Chad's gonna win this thing, and yeah. not being able to tell, but like. I think that track is more one line than what we could have seen from what I've heard from just like the few bits and pieces, but like there was times where Joel, like his hand flew off and then a corner later, he's back right on his ass. So I think the urgency was definitely there big time. Okay. Yeah. I mean, obviously you saw the urgency from Chad. I just, no, uh, no, Joel. I know what you're saying. No, I know what you're saying, but um, still like I, I don't know. It wasn't like Thomas was not holding Joel up. That's the way it looked, at least on the video, you know? Um, but yeah, no, I, I do remember them saying on the radio that Joel's hand slipped off the bar and uh, he was obviously going for it. There was obviously urgency because he wants to get up to the front or, you know, be as close, you know, get another spot if he can. But uh, there was no changes still until the last lap 
And, uh, you know, with one lap to go, Thomas is, is in second still, Joel's in third, and they come together. Seemed like Joel got back going right away or kept going, and um, Thomas would fall then all the way to eighth. So he led more laps in the moto than anybody. He was strong in second place until the very, you know, with one lap to go. And then he has this uh, this run-in with Joel and uh, – and, um, Coming off the bike, correct? <laughs> Yeah, I believe so. I haven't really seen any pictures or anything. I just knew that um, something happened and he lost a ton of time. I mean, there was obviously a lot of time uh, went by from him being in second to falling all the way to eighth. Because I I believe Mm -hmm. there wasn't that many people uh, other than the top eight that were on the lead lap. Maybe maybe 12 guys were on the lead lap or something. Um, So... So, yeah, I mean, he lost a lot of time. I was worried that he wasn't even going to finish then. Or, you know, I'm like, oh, man, like swirling, like I don't know if he's okay, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he did, was able to finish. But I'm sure that was pretty uh, pretty disheartening. You know, we obviously, like, there's all kinds of speculation going around the Internet about this move and stuff. I've even seen some pictures of the incident. But yep. uh, but I they're not clear enough to me on what yeah. could have happened. I, I don't um, – I don't, what was that like a hip jump or like a, like a roller thing in the middle of the corner where this happened on and they just seemed to get together. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I just like, like a hip, like to the right type, you know what I mean? And then I don't know if it, uh, it goes it went down a little bit and then back to the left or I don't know. Or what, I don't know. Yeah. It's a, that's what it kind of in that, in the pictures that we saw, but there, like I said, there's only, there's only a couple pictures out there to what, you know, it's what actually or what it looks like is happening. And I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's just it was a weird angle, I thought, to, to look at the pictures. I thought so, too. I mean, obviously, I sent the I sent the pictures that the kind of the kind of progression, the little montage of pictures to the group chat here and uh, just didn't seem clear enough to me. I mean, yeah, you see Joel and Thomas getting together, but without seeing the video. And I and I watched it on Brandy's live feed a bunch of times. I see that they come together. It's just hard without seeing it in person at a better angle. Like I'm not going to hop on the internet and like, there's people that there's people that wanted Joel's head after that race ended. Like people were mad and uh, I wasn't going to feed into that because I don't know. Like I always, I always thought that those two were like kind of friendly with each other. Like, like that's how it seems. But uh Yep. Yep. And I would say, no, I don't know. Um, you know, maybe another racing, racing incident there where Joel, you know, Joel thought he could, he saw an opening to where he might've tried to thread the the needle and maybe Thomas closed that up enough to where they got together. It's yeah, we weren't there. We have no idea, you know, without seeing it in person, I thought, you know, Brandy did a great job of, you know, going live. So a lot of people could see the feed and stuff. I just had a hard time. Like my, it just seemed kind of fuzzy for me to you know, pick out who was who and what was like going on. And then she, then she ended that, ended that, that feed pretty quickly at the end of the race there. And that's, I just caught the end of that, that they, they got together and then said she had to go. So it just sounded like maybe it wasn't going to be good, but I don't know. Yeah. Going off the live feed. I mean, as soon as that happened to Thomas, I think that at that point she's worried about Thomas. So yeah, right. I think she I think Definitely. she cut, think she cuts the live feed and uh yeah, again, like the emotions were high. I'm sure for those guys, emotions were high just in the ATB community on, on again, on social media and stuff. And, uh, but I guess it wouldn't have probably mm-hmm. been so serious, but people saw, you know, the, whatever happened, the little bit of racing incident that happened at the beginning of the heat race. And now that's got like a snowball effect because it's the same yeah. two riders, same two riders again. And it's like, Okay. Absolutely. You know, so people want to draw conclusions. Um, yep. but, uh, but yeah, he's got a GoPro crazy. on. So I wish that they would kind of like release some of that footage from oh. both hole shots. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I wouldn't be surprised if there's good action to be had. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like I could see the GoPro there. So I'm sure, see it. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure that maybe that footage will get released. And I was told by the photographer that, that sent me, um, the pictures of the incident that gloop rip it up films was standing in that corner with his camera. So if that is true, there should be 
really good Stop footage there. of this of this thing going down. So um, until then, obviously. Neither, it's hard like, to tell. well, the three of us like aren't picking sides. Like, we don't have a dog in the fight. We're 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 cheering on all of like both of those guys, obviously. And uh, again, like, we're not going to feed into any controversy because that's no. not that's not what this is about. So, no. um, so yeah, so nobody was hurt out of that deal, and you know Thomas was able to get back up and finish. Not obviously not finishing where he wanted to be, especially after leading you know a lot, a big portion of the race, and. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm sure things things probably escalated there after the race, but you know here we are a few days later, probably blown over by now, and it'll be forgotten come round two. Yeah, I just feel bad for Thomas after how good of a ride he had. He leads all those laps and then has an eighth place to show for it. I do feel for him in that way, but uh, yeah. but yeah, so so Chad wins his fourth Daytona. Um, you know that was kind of a signature win for him, at least in my mind. It was one of the best races for him that I think we've seen in a while, you know, he was just biding his time, riding comfortable, being second, but in a sandwich of those two guys is not a comfortable place to be um, because you kind of got to balance making runs, but not leaving yourself susceptible to to Joel coming up from the backside. And uh, again, like he set the, he set the tone by biding his time, getting the lead, sprinting away, strong win. He was clearly the strongest guy. so yeah, I think that 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 was uh that was a big one for for Chad and and with four now there's been six he's four for six in these things, um, he's got to be running out of room. Yeah, surfboards. He's got to be running out of room. <laughs> oh right? yeah. Oh yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure he is running out of room, but that's a good problem to have. Oh but, yeah. Uh, but I think that um, I think that you know, he's setting a precedent now where it's like either depending on how long the event lasts, cause there's never a guarantee either. Nobody is going to set, nobody's going to catch his, his number of them, or it's going to be a while at least because uh, four for six is pretty good odds. And uh, man, he looks strong doing it. So the rest of the season is going to be really exciting at the front. If Chad has upped his game um, by that much, because, it looks like he's a better version of himself than he was when we saw him exit uh, last year down the stretch. Yeah, I actually yeah. briefly talked to him there. Uh, I think it was on Wednesday. I, you know, texted him, told him, "Oh, nice job and stuff," and just kind of asked him how he how he felt. And um, he said that he didn't, you know, don't want to base it off Daytona. And I get that. That's a you know, it's a different track that they race on all year long. Um, but he said he, he's feeling great and. Um, his bike, he's got this set up and everything pretty much dialed in. So I think, um, you know, he's, he's ready to go this season. So I think this season is going to be, you know, be good and I haven't talked to Joel. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, what's up with that, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for round two after, after all this, it was just good to see everybody back out there again. And, um, yeah. Yeah, it was exciting. Um, you know, like you said, Joel finishes second there. He turned his day around after the first uh, first corner crash there in the heat race. Um, again, like things are blowing up on social media and people are making a huge deal of the situation. As you said, Sean, I'm sure it'll blow over and everybody will be fine. It's a long season. Like um, everybody will coexist just fine. But uh, yeah, Joel, probably after the way the day started and everything to come away with the second is probably pretty good. Um, you got any thoughts on on that, Hammy? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, he wants to come out probably in first, but like you just said, um, given how the day went, I mean, it's the first round. You can't win the championship in Daytona, but you can definitely lose it there. I think yeah. uh, we've said that before. And yeah. um, so coming out healthy, you know, and everyone's healthy besides Cody Ford, who had a wreck Sunday at the Mesa. Motorsports Park, I think, down there the d- day before or a couple of days before. But okay, for the most yeah. part, everyone's healthy going into round two, so that's good. And the top two guys that we predicted are one and two, so that's cool. Yeah, I think that is a really good thing to note um, because I'm always worried of somebody coming out of Daytona being hurt just because of the – the tighter track and the the craziness that that can create. We've obviously seen that in the past with, with Joel Hetrick and uh, some other guys, obviously. So um, yeah. So then because of what happened to Thomas, Allen inherits third, 
um, to earn his first career podium, which is awesome. Um, and we heard from him a little bit ago, but man, that was impressive. I think that, uh, that he, the thing that like, you, you don't just luck into a, a pro podium. Right. So, um, but he's almost, uh, even like stamps the approval on that, that much more because he like rode a really strong race. Like Bryce wasn't all over him and he wasn't that far behind the top, uh, the top group there. Um, so something happens to Thomas, which is unfortunate, but Alan swoops right in there and, uh, and grabs that podium. That was huge for him. The pictures that came uh, out from that with him and his family and, uh, and spraying the champagne, that looked like a pretty cool moment. So awesome for Alan. And uh, that you, you never forget uh, your first career podium for sure. So um, big day for him. Impressive day. He capped probably the, the most impressive performance of the day, probably for me, or at least the most surprising. And uh, you almost got a, it's almost got me thinking like, could he be the most improved rider? We talked about that on the preseason show, but uh, he would be the early favorite, I think for that after, after round one here. So if you guys got any thoughts on uh, Alan's performance, uh, man, I applaud that guy because he killed it. Yeah, he did. I think that, uh, you know, again, like I'm in the way I feel about Daytona, it's, you know, different than what they race all year long. So, you know, to see him follow up, follow him up at, uh, at Texas um, would be would be great. And, you know, you know, earn a top five, get back up there again and, you know, let him then we'll kind of see on where he's at on, you know, fitness wise. And you're going to be I think we'll see how where everybody is fitness wise fitness wise once we get into these get into these bigger tracks but but no doubt a solid ride for Alan Myers I did not expect him to uh, you know pull off a podium um, you know talking about the pictures you see celebrating and stuff I thought one of the coolest pictures was the one of I, I think it was his dad I would say it was his dad there that someone captured that them to uh, them to hugging and you know it brings back memories and just your family's with you and you're racing and that that's what you that's why the family does it that's why every the families are together and um you know working hard like that and it pays off and to see everybody excited like that was pretty cool absolutely i think uh i saw some of those pictures too from from the photographers there and uh yeah the the just just the emotions like i could feel them you know like we've all all three of us have felt that before um, with our, with our dads, with our family. And uh, that's a special feeling. Uh, Alan talked about it, how, how great of a feeling that was for him. And uh, like I said, I could feel it through the photos. You know, I know you Hammy, feel the same way. You've had those experiences with your parents going to the podium and stuff too, in the pro-am class and whatever earlier days. And uh, that that's was, what we do it for, you know, I mean, exactly we, we live right. for those days. And yeah. the moments like that's what we that's what we want to get we want to get to the podium so we can take those pictures and remember them so i could only imagine what he was thinking in his head when he's seeing thomas like whatever was going on at that moment because i couldn't see but yeah. like probably scream i would have been screaming inside my helmet like so pumped yeah i i can't even imagine uh he he talked about how it just hit him and it was like he got he froze cold like oh my god this is actually gonna happen so yeah um, that was cool for him to get that top three and uh deserve it with the way he rode dude he won his heat race he wins his heat race and then he uh finishes runs a you know a solid solid fourth the whole race gets third into, into the third on the last lap gets a podium he earned it 100 percent. so yeah great performance mm -hmm. by him and uh Okay, so we haven't even barely spoke about it yet, but this is exciting. So, so how about Bryce Ford? Bryce Ford gets fourth. He finished fourth. He got third in his heat race, fourth in the main event. And, uh, man, this could be the most impressive pro debut we've ever seen because the Racer Connection, um, Stephen Royaker shot me a message, and he's like, hey, like we want to hear um, this compared to other of the best – pro debuts ever and so I start going through the record books and I start kind of crunching the numbers and whatever and we know about rookies winning but it comes later in the season and uh and Joel was the last person to do that and until last year there was no rookie to be on the podium until 
until la before last year. It was going back to 2011 with, with Joel and Chase Snap. And uh, prior to that, so I go back into the early 2000s, and I know that Dustin Wimmer got – uh, podium in 2004, but it came at the very end of the season. So I, as far as I can find by crunching all the data I could find, this was the most impressive rookie performance in a debut for at least 20 years, dating back to the nineties. And then, and then the results kind of get a little harder to find obviously on, on that stuff, but either way. Um, and I kind of tried to go into this in one of my social media posts from the page and stuff, but the, per, the, the expectations and the predictions and all this stuff, all the stuff that we think that, that Bryce Ford can do, the expectations are so high that I just don't want that to overshadow how freaking impressive a fourth place finish clear top five guy, how great of a performance that was on Tuesday because, man, Bryce Ford killed it. Like, dude, it's his first race as a pro, and he was right in the mix, finishes fourth overall, literally only one step off the podium, and wait for it, he's only going to get better from here. So super impressive. Um, you guys talk about it like like Bryce killed it. He lived up to all, up to all the for hype. Sure. And, I did. Uh, and there was so much hype. It's crazy that he was able to live up to it, honestly. Yeah, I, his, I can't imagine what his nerves were like. I would have been, I would have been super nervous. And for some reason, just until you said that, I thought he raced last year, but or that Ironman race. But now thinking back, he did not race that. So yeah, it would have it definitely his debut. And um, yeah, excited to see, excited to see how the season. We, you know, we talked on it on the the previous episode of. Um, you know, our, our expectations are high for him just because from what we've heard and what we've seen. Um, yeah, congrats. Congrats to Bryce. And I hope he does well the rest of the season and excited to see, see what we can see out of him. Absolutely. Hammy, did you talk, did you talk to him? Did you communicate? Yeah, I did. Him um, race? Yeah, I uh, talked to him a little bit. I just asked him about like his first pro race, his debut and wanted to ask him like, if he had any expectations and if he, and if he had fun. And um, he said he had a lot of fun. He learned a lot, especially about staying calm and finding the right lines to pass. Yeah. And um, well, he said overall he felt really good on his bike. And uh, he's really looking forward to going to round two. And he came out um, right where he wanted to be, top in the points, you know, top five. He got fourth. And um, it really sounds like he's just, like, going to go to the next round. Like, it sounds like all positive things. It's exciting. It's going to be fun to watch him all uh, all year long. Again, like I was focused on him. I think probably a whole lot of the racing community was because uh, there's just so much speculation. Now, before we go into the rest of the riders, um, so we had Bryce Ford, Brandon Hogue, Wesley Wolf, Nick Janusa all together. And again, like you said, I don't want to, we don't want to spend too much time because it's only Daytona. It's a little bit different track, whatever, but we've all raced long enough to know that the things that happen at Daytona, like crazy stuff still doesn't happen. I mean, the guys still generally speaking finish pretty close to where they normally would. So yeah. I'm going to ask you guys almost as a prediction, the group that we put into that, tier of Bryce Ford, Brandon Hogue, Wesley Wolf, Nick Janusa. Is that going to still be a tier going forward, those four riders? And now do we add Allen to that group of riders? Or are some of those riders either not at that level or have they like progressed to kind of the contender level or whatever with, with Thomas and, you know, but now Thomas might be in the group with the top two guys. So um, how do you see that breakdown? Is, is Bryce Ford, Brandon Hogue, Wesley Wolf, Nick Janusa kind of a tier still, or do they not necessarily fit together anymore? That's tough. Um, just after, after the one first... race. Yeah. I'm just, I guess, uh, and I guess you don't have, even have to consider all the guys, but do you see any of those guys being a contender and uh, was there, what, I guess. Are we saying uh, contender for podiums or wins? Well, you tell me. It's just, are, are any of those guys like 
way past where, where your expectations were of them, because honestly, they all probably fit pretty much where I predicted them to be. Um, yeah. Other than obviously Allen should have clearly been in that group. I think. Uh, because all think, of, because that group, if just to recap, that group was all guys that we said will challenge for podiums. Every one of them will challenge for podiums. Yep. Um, just the other, the top upper echelon guys are going to be there every single week. You know? Right, right. I'm, I, you know, I think Janusa, it sounded like Janusa yeah. had, had some mechanical issues with the bike. So I don't, I don't think we really saw. Uh, Nick riding at uh, you know the level that Nick can ride at and or you know what the level that Nick is at this year yeah. um, so I, th I think that he's I think we're still waiting you know wait for round two on him um, I'm still gonna put him up there as a, as a yeah um, it just seemed like he had some he had some mechanical issues out of out of his control is kind of what I what yeah. I read did you guys yeah did you guys read he said he was bombing that single jump thing and uh must have bent an axle that started to cause the bearing carrier to go or whatever. And then that, that uh, made him drop a chain um, and that derailed his day. So yeah, definitely not taking him out of that mix at all because he was fast in time qualifying. He was top five in time qualifying and he ran up on and passed Jeffrey in the heat race to finish third. So I thought that Janusa's day was very impressive. Um, oh. Actually in my notes prior to him having the problem, all I wrote down was he didn't get the start that he needed to contend for being a podium guy. But in my mind, like he could have been, he was going that speed, you know? Yep. He had, mm -hmm. he was happy, had the speed, um, you know, and then, you know, Alan Meyer, you know, with him finishing a podium, are you going to, can you put him up in there? Um, I guess it all just depends. I don't know how many laps they and, you know, what they did for a time, because, you know, once we get to the outdoors, you know, it's what are they? Are they 18 plus two or is it 20 plus one? I think it's 18 plus two as well. Yeah. Two. yeah I don't. If Alan Myers, if, if Alan Myers gets the gets the starts, you know, kind of like he did at Daytona, I think you could I think you could see him to run up there for, you know, be a contender, you know, definitely top five contender, I would say. Um Wesley Wolf again, obviously still a contender, but I think I don't know if it's his starts that maybe hinder, you know, how fast he gets up to the front or or what's what's really going on there. Yeah, I don't know either. He, um, I guess, as we go down the list here, Brandon Hogue, we kind of covered him. Um, he came in in fifth in the fifth spot, and uh, he looked to basically be in position to get the whole shot. Like we. I saw pictures. He was basically out in front of the field, at least by a little bit, and would have been in the position to kind of take the, the inside track on that first corner. And he just ran it in too deep. We heard him earlier, and he said that he ran it in too deep, and that hindered him. So he came from, you know, about that 10th place-ish mid-pack spot and got up to fifth. Thought that yep. was impressive from him. Again, I him and Janusa were the two guys I wrote down that they just both didn't get the starts that it, they that they needed to um, to be at the front. So obviously Brandon didn't have the day that he wanted, um, especially after being second in time qualifying, winning the heat race. He's going to want more than a top five, but to get out of there was good. And then, yeah, to finish up what you're saying, I mean, Wesley Wolf ended up sixth. That's basically exactly kind of where we expected him to be. That's where he was, would have been last year. Cause we basically had said in the preseason podcast, if he betters himself at all, that would mean he'd be top five every weekend because he had a handful of top fives last year and a fourth to end the season. But uh, his season average was basically a sixth place. So that's kind of, right where we expected him to be, but we kind of predicted that like his starts can kind of be all over the place. I think that if he would have got a start at the front, he might've stayed there, you know, but, uh, but um, yeah, Wesley came in, in six there and maybe again, like that's, what's going to separate that tier is the guys that can get starts. We expected good starts out of Bryce Ford. We expected good starts out of Brandon Hogue. We said that Wesley was kind of a wild card when it comes to starts. Nick Janusa doesn't always get the best starts. And then now if you're going to put Allen in that tier as well, I mean, again, 
that it's going to be such a competitive group of guys. It's going to be whoever gets the gets the whole shot that's going to separate yep. themselves. Yep. Yep. It'll be a good. It'll be a good battle. Those guys will battle. It'll be fun to watch the, that group of guys. You know, racing all year long, all year round. I think. Oh, be, we, we yeah, we we speculated that that was going to be the best group. So, um, you got anything to throw in there, Hammy, about that those group of guys there? No, I agree. I think uh, that battle from. I think from third to seventh will just be crazy per moto and you'll really be able to see who gets the best hole shots and who's in shape. Yeah. I think yeah. That's what it's going to come down to. I think so too. I, so our next guy on the list then finishing seventh was Wes Lewis. And uh, we talked about how impressive top tens were going to be. Right. So Wes Lewis coming in seventh, there was a great gritty performance by him. Impressive. And so I post a, I post kind of a little post on Instagram, giving him credit for getting seventh is something you might've missed And Harv Whipple, the pro uh, referee comments on it. And he says, Wes is a seasoned veteran. The front row had eight spots left, and he chose the back row and the, on the inside right behind Brandon Hogue, and he said that it was the most strategic move of the day because he uh, because Brandon pushes wide, Wes gets to the inside of the corner, gets a good start, and, uh, and finishes seventh on the day. That's a ballsy move to make oh. take back, to take a back row start there and, and get it done. So it, it turned out for him. That's impressive. There. Wow. Yeah. No, yeah very job. cool. But he, he deserved a seven. He deserved a finish like that. You know, he works hard. He's been in, I raced with him. We all, I, I, you yep. know, coach, I raced with Wes and I mean, I'm sure he's out from, he's kind of over in your area. I guess he's probably pencil. I think it's Pennsylvania. Yeah. Miami. Actually funny story. My first time ever on a motocross track, Wes Lewis spanked me in 2007 <laughs> in the Woodsman class, like spanked me two weekends in a row. And then I never seen him until like, 2011 and he yep. came back so yeah yep. I've, I've raced with west quite a few times yeah so no i you know that's awesome for him i hope he i hope west has a good season because you know we didn't we haven't really talked about him and um you know i have been seeing his posts and stuff he has been down there he has been down training and and riding i think it looks like so um but yeah seventh place finish for him i'm sure he was happy with that and i mean i'm happy for him for that that's that's an awesome finish for him yeah, yeah, good for him. Like old reliable. Like yeah. you like you don't know how he's gonna get it done, but he's gonna he's gonna be solid. So Wes oh, Lewis the back row. Yeah, I know. That's wild. crazy, right? Crazy. I I, I wouldn't knew. even think to take that spot. I, I don't think I would either. I think I would have taken my chances and on the gate probably. On I the outside know. or something, yeah. Yeah, and or again way inside. And again, like he there was eight spots left. It's not like there was just a few stragglers on the outside. There's eight spots left, Harv said. And, uh, and, and yeah, he decides to go behind Brandon because he, because he said that Brandon was getting the good starts. Right. So um, maybe it worked into his advantage that, that Brandon pushed wide. And or he knew, or he knew like, okay, this kid's second year, he won the heat race. He's going to be nervous. He's going to push for wide. It. I'm going to sneak right around the inside of this one. <laughs> there you go. So that was a cool storyline there for sure. Um, we talked in depth about Thomas, obviously. He has the ins. He leads nine laps, has the incident, falls back to eighth. So he's going to come in eighth, obviously try to uh, to pick back up, um, you know, uh, get get this thing back on the rails for, for Texas there. And uh, ninth was Noah Mickelson second rookie to kind of come through impressive ride for him and uh and logan stanfield another super impressive ride obviously talked to travis moore today and they were pumped to come out of there with the top 10 be in good position be healthy that puts so rookies in fourth ninth and tenth and uh gotta say that that's pretty impressive hot take hammy wasn't given any credit to the rookies and we got three rookies coming home in the top 10. So um, how do we do you, feel about no, that? I, um, I called what Bryce Ford was going to get. So that's one for one. And <laughs> I said, Logan Stanfield was going to do good. And I said, Noah Mickelson was going to do good. But you so also said, I don't, I don't say not, what you, I, <laughs> you also said that you were not impressed at the rookie class. So, so anyway, so other than, other than them three. Okay, fine. Well, I'm sorry. We'll get into that in a second, but it's only Daytona. <laughs> Ask me this after round five. 
<laughs> okay. But, uh, but yeah, so good ride by those guys for sure. Um, again, we talked about how tough top tens were going to be and those guys come through in ninth and 10th. So that was good. And then as we, as we can kind of lump this together, Brogan Geyer had a good start. He was running, I think in like the top six ish for the beginning of the race. And, uh, and he ends up finishing 11th. I think he might've made a mistake at some point or whatever, but, uh, but yeah, it was, you know, rookies, three in the top 10 and then kind of all together their ninth, 10th and 11th. And like we said, um, those guys are going to be dicing it up kind of against each other. And you kind of saw that in the back half of the top 10. So that was a good showing for the rookie class for sure. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know Brogan Geyer got a good start. Um, but yeah, to finish 11th, I did see, I did see, uh, he, I think he posted something on Instagram a few days before the race saying that he'd, you know, they kind of had him as a, as a sleeper, you know, kind of counting or don't count him out or something like that. But yeah, I mean, more power to him. Get, get up there and battle with those guys. That's what it's all about. And, um, but yeah, he got his feet wet, I guess, if he ran up front for a little bit and, but 11th place finish and you're, what was that? A second, was that a second or pro race, second yeah. or third pro race? Yeah. Second. Yeah. He did the, the Crawfordsville thing, like a lot of the other guys. And, uh, yeah, I think he, he got a good start there. But yeah, I heard that comment too. I'm like, oh, I don't think we didn't, I don't think we discredited him on the podcast if he was referencing us. But, uh, but, but yeah, I think again, like, I think I, I think I got 11th in my pro debut. And, uh, and yeah, so I mean, again, for that was a good showing. I think the rookies there were together, 9th, 10th, and 11th. Like, that's pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, moving on then to 12th place was uh, was Josh Merritt, the XC1 GNCC Pro. And I will say I was super impressed. Like, that's a pretty good showing because he wasn't – I mean, I didn't know if he was going to, like, be disconnected from the pack. You know, I mean, I don't know how to expect. Like, he's a cross-country guy. He's a woods guy. And uh, he definitely held his own. And I read in a post that he was hoping to do some more this season. So I'd be excited to see him on an outdoor track because maybe even that'd be more his style. I don't know. But, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, I thought that that was a pretty impressive ride by him. What, um, how does he usually do in the GNC, the GNCC? So, so he got eighth in the previous one, the weekend, like a couple days prior at, uh, at what was that wild boar maybe, but, sure. uh, but yeah, he got, he got uh, eighth there and then races the Daytona ATV Supercross and gets a 12th yeah. there. So I thought that was pretty impressive. I was impressed. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's awesome. It, it's cool to see those guys come over there and do some of that. And if he's going to try to do some more and yeah, great. Excited to see him up there lined up with all of them. Just adds, awesome. to, the, adds to the class. So, uh, <laughs> so that's, that's good. Um, yeah. And then my prediction coming in at 13th was, uh, was Cody Ford. He was my prediction for um, most improved rider. We didn't get to kind of see that firsthand. Um, he's got a fractured hip uh, in talking to the Ford brothers racing team there. It sounds like um, that fracture could have been worse. He's going to avoid surgery, but it's going to take some, some time to heal. So he kind of saved himself in qualifying, saved himself in the heat race, and then kind of like put on a really impressive performance. I mean, beat a number of guys there in the main event. Um, so that was good. We just want him to get healthy. And I think that you'll see his true colors. It's a shame to see him start the season this way. Hammy, did you reach out to him? Did you get to talk to that Ford brother too at all? Yeah, just a little bit. I just asked him how that he had gotten hurt, and he said it was practicing that Sunday before the race at Mesa, but we didn't really get anything else about Daytona. Okay. Too, okay, too yeah. serious. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't know if you had any info there, but uh, but yeah, I was actually really impressed with the performance he had there to come through in 13th, and uh, and it's not like he was just cruising around in the main event. Like, he was giving it his all, so that was that was pretty impressive. 14th was Troy Hill. Um, I think he might have even had a good hole shot in the main event at 1.2 and then possibly something happened because I believe he he fell back at one point and then uh, and then had a gap kind of from the pack to him. So I don't know exactly what happened there, but uh, but uh, I think he was up front kind of early and um, something might have happened whether he came off the bike or whatever. And uh, then 15th 
was Ty Hudson. I, that was the last guy that would have been circulating at the end of the race because 16th was Hayden Mickelson. I believe he blew a motor. If, uh, if the pictures I saw were correct, I saw him in a puff of smoke. Um, Nick Janusa came in 17th. We talked about his rear end problems and uh, that DNF, but that obviously isn't a fair representation of how well um, he actually rode up to that point in the day. And then Jeffrey Rastrelli comes home in 18th DNF. He had a tough day from the beginning. I know he probably wasn't where he wanted to be in qualifying. He, uh, he got a, four, a fourth in the heat race. And then um, in the main event there, I know that actually they were changing the motor in that thing prior to the main event. So I, then in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, maybe that makes sense. Maybe previous in the day, like he just, the machine wasn't letting him be at his full potential. And then gosh, he gets into this first corner melee and uh, doesn't even do more than one lap in the main event. So, um, so that stunk for him. Um, um, so him mm -hmm. and Janus are, are in the hole. Um, going to have to, going to have to make up some points in these next couple rounds, but uh, any, any thoughts on the, the back, <laughs> back part of the pack there, guys? Um, I just want to say real quick, I mean, if any of these guys are racing pro class, they're not slow. So I don't want to make it seem like I'm dogging any of these guys either. Like they would, most of them would probably beat me right now. Most of them, all of them, <laughs> maybe few, but like, I just yeah. want to say that I'm not trying to dog anybody. No, I know. I know you're not. It's, it's, it's. And when you said best rookie class of all time, I had to voice my opinion. I said that it was the book best rookie class in a while, the best rookie yeah. class that we've seen in some time, which I think is still true. I think that they had a good solid ride at the first race and uh, just glad that nobody got, got hurt there. Um, looking forward to hopefully Cody just getting back healthy. Uh, I know he's not part of the rookie class, but yeah, the rookie class is, is impressive. And, and again, like the class as a whole right now is very, very competitive. You saw that with the pace that those guys ran yeah. at the, at the first race. So that's impressive. And it's just great for the sport overall. Yeah. It's awesome for the sport. It would, I think you'll see, I mean, you know, guys that didn't have very good races this weekend. You know, I think we'll we'll see you know some flip flops and mm -hmm. you know there and some you know, some guys are going to have their tracks that they're they're better at that they enjoy and yeah, I think it's going to be a good season for everybody. Well, it's it's going to be very exciting too because obviously we saw the guys that did well. Um, you got like a guy like Brandon Hogue who has feels like he he expects more obviously of himself. And, uh, and then, um, you know, kind of going back through the field, those guys that had some tough luck are going to want to come out with some vengeance at the, at the first, you know, at the first outdoor race. Um, so it's really exciting. It's going to kind of be a clash of a bunch of guys and uh, it should be, should be good for sure. So exciting. Um, to kind of to kind of move on to the next steps of the series. You guys got anything else? It was a hell of a day of racing. Um, you guys got anything else that we didn't cover yet? Uh, I did see, and this is non ATV related, but I did see uh, Bob, Sunset Ridge owner. <laughs> did he win a, a vet class? He did. He did win a vet class race on a Mako. Um, I got a message from Jan, his wife in the morning and said, Hey, what's the link for the races? Uh, Bob's down there racing and I'm told that he won. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, I would have never guessed it. And, uh, so yeah, I tuned in for the next one then. And I was actually listening on the radio and, uh, that was exciting. So yeah, sunset Bob pulls the win at, uh, at Daytona and, uh, yep. Jan, Jan made the comment, uh, something like going out on top or something like that. So, uh, so that was, that was exciting, uh, for sure. Great guys. Cause I also yep. saw, you probably saw the same thing that, uh, the two Illinois natives, yep. Chad, Chad Wienan and, uh, and Sunset Bob, uh, That's both won there at Daytona. That's why I brought it up just because, you know, Sunset Bob there, that facility's always treated quads great. And, you know, Chad, that's pretty much Chad's home track. So that, I just had to throw that in there. If, you know, if you know Bob, you know Bob. He's a great, great guy. Super nice. The family, great family. So, yeah, I just had to throw that in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you see Bob, congratulate him. I know that uh, that they uh, 
that they're podcast listeners. They tune into the podcast and support the podcast stuff too. So yeah, they uh, support quads as much as just about anybody as far as tracks go. And uh, I said last year, I think that I'll take that track over any other track in my book. So, um, so yeah, you guys got anything else? I don't, I don't, nope. Well, I think this is how we wanted it to go for the first round. It was exciting. Again, I'll, I've said it a few times, but somehow, some way, the hype was huge, and they still were able to live up to the hype, which was crazy impressive. So, um, again, like, it just I can't believe that all the preseason hype was justified. They all confirmed it, and now, I mean, we're just excited for, for that much more. So, um, guys, again – Thanks for, thanks for your time tonight. Thanks for your input. Um, the fans were saying that this was, some of them were saying that this was their most anticipated episode yet and that they were excited to, to hear what we had to say, excited to have our rider interviews tonight and stuff. So uh, very excited. Just, uh, just can't thank you guys enough for your time and uh, looking forward to a lot more of this as the season progresses. No problem, man. Enjoy it. Yeah, thanks for having me, brother. I appreciate it. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much. And uh, and with that, we'll get right into our interview with Chad Wienan. And now our final guest of the night, brought to you by DID Racing Chain and SSI Decals. He's your six-time AMA ATB Pro Champion and now four-time Daytona event winner. Fresh off his most recent victory, it's Chad Wienan. What's up, buddy? Thanks for uh, giving, a little, giving us a little bit of your time. Yeah, man. Thanks. Uh, great to be on. Um, really... Uh enjoy your podcast you know i don't get to listen to quite all of them but uh, especially when i'm on the road i try to try to tune in on it and uh man crazy crazy weekend at, or crazy week at daytona you know everything everything went really good a lot of a lot of stuff to talk about i'm sure yeah yeah for sure first of all i appreciate you listening um obviously it's a it's an honor and and yeah i ha- so i had this conversation with our friend ian harris from ssi decals on tuesday evening after the races but with so much hype uh surrounding the beginning of the season all the moving and shaking of other guys yet you come out and steal the show yet again at the opener it's like uh you were the strongest guy and you made uh, 35 look like 25. So tell us hmm. about your day, man. Um, actually I call it like a three, two, one day. So like time qualifying, uh, actually felt really good. I got the, I got the fastest qualifier in the first one. Um, but, uh, yeah, the track was, uh, pretty, not necessarily like very wet, but like it was soft in some spots and, uh, but seriously, like my machine was dialed in from, when I, the first roll on the track, like we made a lot of, not like big changes, but we made a lot of big progress, I would, I would say, but, um, uh, definitely like our, our engine package is like strongest it's ever been. And we made huge improvements this past year and, you know, changing, uh, to rocket machine hubs, TWT wheels, um, uh, we went back to Floorworks and Visionaire with uh, also a uh, big one was uh, PEP performance tuning. And they, they they woke up my machine, let's just say that. I wondered if that was new for you when I saw that you guys were working together. I, I, I thought that might have yeah. been a, a new deal there. Yeah, like we've been uh, – like they approached me a little bit last year, like before the season was done, and see if I – you know, they wanted to offer their help to maybe help me get another championship. and. Uh, it was just, uh, you know, end of the season. I didn't want to try anything new to possibly jeopardize something. So uh, we went into the off season and we've been working pretty, pretty hard on it for the past like month and a half. So we got everything dialed in and uh, machine is just rideability. The machine is so good and uh, the torque is amazing. So I uh, really feel like my acceleration is is dialed coming in and out of the turns and uh i mean suspension uh the fox shocks like everything testing there we designed a new uh we got new linkage and everything so man just the, the machine just settles in the turn so well and i'm just uh i feel like the machine is doing exactly what i want it to do and 
doesn't give me any like surprises. So that's awesome. Then, I was gonna I was gonna ask you how much change there was in your program because I sensed that there was some. Um, yeah. So I was I was curious to ask you about that, and I knew that you had said on the podium that the machine was was working like an extension of yourself. Yeah, yeah, and uh, but you know, going along with the day, like um, so overall for the qualifier, I, I ended up third, and uh, like uh, Joel and Hogue, like they they wrote some solid laps. I tried to actually better it a couple times, and I wasn't able to quite get it, but. Um, you know, I didn't sweat it. I knew that uh, come race race time, I'm going to, you know, be ready for the gate drop. And so we had the heat race and got a got a good jump out of the, out of the start. Uh, Hope was just an inside of me. We were battling for the start. And I ran it in deep. He ran it in deep. And so I had to relinquish to him. And it pushed me out a little bit and allowed Rastrelli. And then Janusa actually, like, tucked in there, too. and we Janusa and I were battling for the third spot there and I ended up overtaking him after like the wall jump and down into the next turn. But uh yeah, I kind of stalked Jeffrey for a couple laps and then Hogue actually got a little wet little bit away. And uh once I got by Jeffrey, I was able to reel in Hogue and but uh man, this, the track was uh really tight and Hogue, man. I mean that guy was surprised a lot of people. I mean, I knew that he was going to be strong this year, but I didn't know that he was going to be like, he came with some good intensity and uh, good starts. I mean, the guy was uh, right there on all the starts. So yeah, he looks good uh, overall. I'll let you finish, but overall it's just so cool for the sport. Um, yeah. You know, to see it be so strong and then to see some younger guys come up and kind of push you guys that have been the contenders for so long, but uh, yeah, good, good heat race for both of you guys. Cause you ran it up on them from a, from a ways back. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I a hundred percent agree with your comment on that. You know, we, we need other riders in the front to mix it up and we need to, you know, have people guessing like with Thomas leading that, you know, we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later, but just having the more riders up there contending for the top spot and, shoot the the sophomore class kind of took over the heat races you know so that was uh I mean for me like I mean yeah it was a heat race it wasn't a points paying thing and I I mean gate pick was very important but you know uh it was cool to see those guys up there and I mean showing what they've been working on and you know the the track really tended to them if they got a good start they could they could finish it off you know yeah, and nobody knows the feeling of uh, kind of reinventing yourself in the off season like you do. You know, you did that. Uh, you did that going into the 2007 season all those years ago. So, um, so yeah. yeah, you know, you know what it feels like for those guys. But yeah, that sophomore class was impressive, and uh, they were giving you a run for your money. But uh, yeah, you finished second there in the heat race, and then uh, yeah. going into the main event, uh, tell us what you were thinking. Yeah, just uh, I mean, I had a fourth gate pick, so actually was a third. I think it was third gate pick. Okay. One of the two, one of the two. But anyways, uh had a good gate like uh on the left side of the the box and uh we gated really well. We came out and uh like Hogue actually got out a little bit in front of me and then uh like Thomas was there and then right when we got to the turn, Joel stuck it in there and we we made wheel to wheel contact and so I checked up and he pushed out and I cut underneath him and charged into the second turn and I got underneath Joel. So there was a lot of just racing going on already right there. And then I tucked in and I got in there right behind Thomas and Thomas and Thomas and I, like, um, I tried a couple quick attempts at him, but just the way the track was and uh, everything kind of funneled together really quickly. But uh, like Thomas, he rode, he rode strong for as long as I was behind him. And even when I was in front of him, like I kept checking in on him and see where, see what the gap was. And every once in a while, he would have a couple bike lengths between him and Joel. And I was like, man, like we could get this Yamaha one too, you know? So I was getting excited there. And then uh, 
you know, even behind Thomas, like there was only – there was a couple times where Joel was, like, putting a lot of pressure on us that, like, in the – there was one turn in the farthest away from the hole shot that um, – we were taking this really tight inside and Joel was carrying speed around this bowl turn and he almost got up inside of me once, but, uh, you know, um, he had to check up cause the line that I was taking, I was crossing in front of him. So, um, but man, like, uh, the racing was so tight being Thomas out front, me in the middle and Joel in the back. So I was like, I couldn't open up my lines too much. I had to, and I was taking in the split lane, I was taking, I would call it the slower line, but I was able to make it work pretty well where I didn't have to follow Thomas every time. Sure. And so one time I got a really good run on Thomas and I, I talked to him after the race. I'm like, what happened there? Because I got a really good run on you and I almost passed you. And when he came out of the turn, like he, he shot really hard, right? Like right over into my line. And I was like, was that like a cross jump Thomas or what was that? I was like kind of joking with him because I knew that berm and the face was all like from the bikes racing there. It was like, yeah. it was cut down. Okay. So your one tire would leave before the other and it would pull you right. And I just kind of gave him a little bit of business on that. Be like, dude, I could have passed you right there, but you shot over right in front of me. Okay. Like what kind of move was that? But uh, I mean, I already knew what it was, but, uh, but uh, I know Randy went out there and he worked some lines, you know, just trying to split it up, which was a really good attempt. But like with the position that I was in, I wasn't really wanting to wander too far off of Thomas's grab bar because Joel was definitely applying pressure at times. And yeah, being the middleman in a situation like that is not a comfortable place to be, you know, because well, uh, you got to worry about your your somebody coming up getting you from behind and uh and you're still trying to make a move on thomas so that puts you in a pickle yeah and you know with with joel behind you like he's gonna run out of patience eventually you know and uh the fireworks are gonna happen so like i was very surprised with uh me being in that position for that long that uh we didn't make any any contact you know like uh but thomas was running a really good pace and I think that's what kept all three of us pushing hard the whole time. And, you know, once, once I, so Thomas made a little mistake uh, in the really tight chicane before the mechanics area, it's like a step up. And he, I think he said he hit like a neutral or something like that. And, okay. But the step up was really tricky. Like it grabbed me once pretty hard and I know it got Joel really bad. And then Thomas made a mistake over too. So, but once I got by Thomas, like I put it, put my head down and charged, you know, probably like three laps about as hard as I could to try and bridge a gap. And you got a nice you know, little gap then you, you, yeah. uh, you made a break for it. Cause it's, I think you had like a four second lead there after those few laps. And, uh, yep. and then, then I knew you, you kind of had it in the, in the bag, but, um, you're exactly right. The pace of all three of you was really high throughout that race because there was laps where it just seemed like uh, the distance between each of you kind of almost stayed the same. And I'm like, mm -hmm. so you could tell because I'm only watching it on a little, you know, a little video feed on my phone. And uh, but I could see, I could see all three of you guys running a running a really high pace. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely was. But I think the thing that I really liked about it the most was it was a high pace, but I felt so comfortable. Like that race felt like it was five minutes instead of 15 minutes, you know, how fast it went by. And like, I never felt like fatigued or mentally unfocused, you know, everything was really clicking for that main for me. And I definitely took on the most roost, I think just off of Thomas's tires. So, okay. I told him after the race, like, like I, sh I showed him, I showed him my machine uh, uh, that night. And I'm, I was like, dude, I had like an inch, like two inches of like mud off my A arms, like yeah. from, from all of his roost. And, but I only pulled like four tear offs. So, <laughs> so, so your quad was close enough that I was getting the roost, but your head yeah. was up not getting it. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I, that's how tight the, the race was. You know, you're close then. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, yeah. yeah. You made a break for it there when you, uh, when you, when you got the lead and, um, and yeah, you, you kind of checked out and made that your own race. So when you, when I asked you to come on tonight, you said um, that a lot went into getting that result. What, mm -hmm. what, what did you mean by that? Was that all the changes in the off season or uh, was there anything specific you were thinking about there? Well, just like all the testing, I actually, once I got done at the nations in October, I came back home and I went straight into testing. Like, cause we still had about a month of good days left still. Okay. Yep. So up here, up yep. here in Illinois. Yep. yep. Back in Illinois. And the dirt is like, it's good for testing. Cause you come down to Florida, it's hard to, it was suspension testing. So it's hard to test in the Florida sand and yeah. take it back to the Northern rounds. Yep. So, um, I got a good suspension setting there. And then it, I came down here and I kind of forced myself just to ride it and not go too far away from it. Because when you come down here, you can get like, like in the sand, you can get really stiff on the rear and then soft on the fronts. Okay. So I just kind of put myself through it to just ride it and get used to it. And because, uh, you know, when you're getting, getting back into shape, like you start to soften your stuff up because you're like, man, I'm getting beaten up. So yeah. I just kind of just wrote it. And then now that, you know, we, we get into like the drier months, like everything starts to harden up again down here in Florida. So the settings are just like right on. Of course. And, yeah. uh, and then, uh, I mean, obviously the, you know, the engine testing and stuff like that. And then like also myself, like just taking my program, my health to another level, um, you know, last year, like, um, there were days that I felt really good. And then there were days that I was just off. So like this year I changed up some of my, my nutrition and, uh, found a little more about myself and I just try to keep better myself every year. And, uh, you know, got down into a race weight that I haven't been to for, Oh, probably like when I was in Kawasaki, I was like this, you know, down to like this weight and you know just uh trying to be light and you know lean and yep. you know I, I feel really good at this weight and it doesn't uh you know the, the, just you know just the my nutrition is just really on point right now yeah I could see in some of the pictures uh even from you or, or on your personal social media even um and then it re-hit me when uh when you you know I could see your face here on the on the video that uh you're cut right now so um yeah, that's awesome. I mean, you can, you can see how you can see on Tuesday, how well you're feeling. And uh, yeah, I mean, you, you keep refining your program after, after six championships and you just always trying to be a little better. That's what makes you the champion you are. Um, so you talked about some of the changes, some of the, all the testing, this, that, and the other thing. What about starts? Did you do anything special about starts other than bettering your machine? Because obviously you and I both know that down the stretch last season, that was the only thing holding you back. So I was curious mm -hmm. if you, if you uh, put some emphasis on that, I guess. I mean, like every day, you know, I try to try to progress myself, but uh, definitely with the suspension changes that we made, it carried over to, you know, the transfer out of the gate and like I mean just about every day I ride I I touch on the starts so okay uh, it's just uh being fine tuning with my my delivery and my power delivery and everything so it's I mean there wasn't anything that was like directed towards starts so much but it was I think it actually transferred over to it when we got the suspension settings that we needed and the traction that we needed as well. And, you know, obviously with me, you know, dropping my weight, it helps me get out of the, go from stop to go. And then of course. the tuning that we did on the machine is it picks up acceleration really fast and it's a smooth power. So it's, it's very rideable. And I think it all just, it all matters, you know, at that point for the whole shot as well. 
and absolutely on the whole shot and in the top level of the sport right now is is that is is so refined and everybody's doing things at such a high level like you got to be perfect so that's why i was i was uh curious to ask so how yeah. much how much emphasis do you put on um on daytona because you know some guys obviously kind of play the card like they're just trying to get through that race and it's always seemed like you kind of look to prove a point at daytona like to try to get an early jump on the rest of the field so um is that kind of your approach or or take me through your thinking there um like my approach is you know get through to daytona like it's always been that but if the opportunity is there for me to take a win you know I'll, i'm going to take the points and i'm going to i'm not going to go above and beyond to try and go get it but if i'm comfortable and my machine's on point, like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go for max points, but like coming into every year, like it's not our normal thing, but I just feel like the track being like tighter. It's not like technical, but you have to be precise. Got to hit your marks for sure. You got to hit your marks and it gets ruddy. And I feel like my technique is really good in like the ruddy conditions. And then like just just really riding the way that I like to ride is it's not a wide open track it's a it's it's you're finessing the machine a little bit exactly yeah it just fits in your wheelhouse there's nothing uh nothing wrong with that um yeah. on the on our season preview podcast um we when we talked about you Chad I I said that you wouldn't come back unless you didn't expect or plan to win and you're making me look like uh like an awfully smart guy right now with the strong start that you had so um so yeah thanks for that but yeah i mean i think you know obviously the way that you executed that main event like you couldn't have asked for a better way to start the season you know you were smart you rode a good consistent race at a high level you felt good you said going through that you make a pass for the lead sprint out a little bit get a gap and then run the thing home and uh next thing you know you're in victory lane yeah it's you know, just, I mean, I compete to try and win. And, you know, I, I definitely, I don't, I don't know when the time's going to be up, but like every, t- every year at the end, like either I, you know, win a championship or I lose on, I miss the championship. Like definitely when I lose them, it fires me up even more to want to get, get it back. And I feel like when that fires out, then that's the time to go. But the way that I feel, like, I feel like I'm in my 20s again, like, fitness-wise. Yep. So, I mean, like you said, the 35 is the new 25. So, like, I mean, I feel great on the machine. And, like, going to Daytona, like, my mental focus was, like, with my machine, the comfortability and how it was running, I'm like, I have everything I need to go do it. And, you know, I feel like going into Texas, like I feel even more eager to get there because we're going to have a rough track. It's going to be, you know, just, I feel like I can run some people down now if I don't get a good start. Like I feel like I'm ready as I've ever been to go after a championship. No, that's so great to hear. Um, I've always been obviously a a big fan of yours, but a lot of that comes from um, the, all the good things that you do for the sport as a whole. You're just such a great spokesman for it and uh, ambassador for it. So yeah, that's exciting. And um, not, not something that the other guys probably want to hear. So, so lastly, and I'm going to ask this because I love this content. Hold, hold on. I got to, yeah. I got to, I got to, I got to mark one more. I did, I did listen to the season preview. Okay. Sean, Sean Taylor did pick me to win. So great, great choice. Shawnee T. But, and, but for the record, he did not yeah. pick you to win the championship and I did. Nope. So. Yep. And I, I, I was going there. I was okay. going there. All right. All right. Um, we, we got a lot of work to do to get to that point, but I mean, that's where my eyes are, my eyes are set on one at a time to get to that goal. So and then, uh, you know, Hamrick, I don't get any love from him. So we're going to try, I'm going to try and make him look stupid this year. 
I hope so because you uh you broke you broke his predicted Joel having a perfect season the very first race so oh gosh yep. yeah well I mean we might as well just squash that real quick yeah I, I like that I like that he'll uh he'll be bummed to hear that uh that he's disappointed I'd like, I'd like for him to come out to a race though you know just uh show face but he's he, like he's always been really cool to me and we get along real well so I know it's nothing personal it's, no uh, of course it's, it's awesome the, it's the predictions <laughs> it's awesome that you can be can you laugh like you can laugh about it with me because like I even said on that preview that I hate any kind of prediction like if I get a chance to not voice my own like I will because I I mean obviously like I'm friends with all of you guys so um mm -hmm. but it's it's good banter and uh oh yeah been a, it's been a lot of fun uh for sure so um but yeah i did i did pick you so yeah just, just well, we're, we're, we're pulling for it yeah yeah i mean it'll be uh be exciting the the again like the the sport is in such a good place and uh there's a lot of exciting storylines and everything else but um yeah excited to see how it plays out but yes so i'm gonna ask this solely because i love the content but do the victory lane trips, the the podiums and stuff like that, does it mean a little more now that you're sharing these memories with uh, with your little guy, with Lakin? It definitely does. Uh, like, funny story, when we're on the podium, I'm giving my, my podium speech, and all, I'm getting towards the end, and Lakin is going underneath the railing and trying to get to me to, like, just, uh, you know, Go to be, with pop, be, be with Papa and uh, you know it was pretty cool because I was like okay my son's coming I gotta make this short uh, right. thank you everybody yeah and uh, you know but yeah I mean it's, it's extra special because he's really starting to like understand a little bit you know like what you know what I do and you know it's great that we can be a family and bring this to the races and um uh, like he loves going for rides and this morning he's putting mud caps in my wheels when I'm finishing a workout, you know, it's like, it's really special, you know, to me and the family. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to change it for anything else. You know, there's nothing more fitting either because, uh, that's what this whole sport is about. I feel like, and, um, <laughs> You know, it's so cool to be like you're at the very top of the sport, and it's still about family for you. So that's uh, that's the coolest thing for me. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely definitely good, and I love spending. I gotta really, really spend my day wisely. Like, yep. I don't find myself on social media as much. I spend a lot of time with him, and then I go ride and train and get back, and before you know it, we're putting him to bed. So it's like, wow like days fly by down here <laughs> no i can't imagine well chad congrats again on uh on another win down in daytona new season same old 44 you get to put the red backgrounds on that thing now which i'm sure will be a, a good feeling and uh it's gonna be a hell of a year you're off to a great start it's an honor for you to join us thanks for the kind words and for listening and uh just thanks again for coming on i really really appreciate it Oh, yeah, definitely. Another cool thing that happened, I mentioned it on my social media a little bit, uh, like Jeff Stanton came up to the podium uh, <laughs> after after our event, and that guy had nothing but good words to say to us and how cool it was to watch this race and, like, looking forward to seeing us again next year. And I'm like, that. I mean, I'm like, like, Jeff, like, you're, you're – you're a legend, you know, like it's, it's time. It's very, yeah. It's so good to hear that from you. And, uh, you know, knowing that, uh, you know, more motorcycles and ATVs, like they appreciate each other and they know what kind of work it goes into to be a champion and to even compete at a, at a high level. So, yeah, of course. So I was listening to the, to, um, the broadcast on quad radio and, mm -hmm. uh, I was listening and there was a voice that was talking very knowledgeably and very highly about the ATV guys. And I'm like, hmm, okay, come to find out it's Jeff Stanton. And mm -hmm. he was talking about you and, and Thomas and Joel and uh, very knowledgeably, knowledgeably and very complimentary. And I'm like, wow, that's cool. And then, yeah, like 
to hear that I read that on your social media how complimentary he was on the podium and stuff and that is that's so cool that everybody's just coexisting um now I mean obviously the sport needs that so that's yeah. very cool and again just like you said it doesn't matter what you're doing uh at the very top level you top athletes obviously can appreciate the other top athletes so to get credit mm -hmm. from somebody like Jeff Stanton goes a really really long way I'm sure yeah yeah it really does and you know uh just a a real uh real good ambassador for the sport you know Ab absolutely well uh he's six time and you're six time of atv so uh -huh. that's that's pretty special but, uh, yeah well chad again congrats thanks for thanks for your time thanks for coming on and uh we'll have to get you back on again soon yeah definitely i can uh i can show you my collection of uh of a board here. There you go. Yeah. Four of them now. I like yeah. that. I like that. All, All right. right. Well, thanks so much. Congrats. And uh, we'll see you soon. What an awesome day of racing. What an awesome episode. Bunch of headliners tonight. Congrats to Chad on another win. Joel and Alan on their podiums. Bryce Ford on a stellar debut. Brandon Hogue on his top five and everyone else. Awesome rides throughout the class. I want to thank our guests tonight. Chad Weenan, Alan Myers, Brandon Hogue, Tyler Hamrick, and Sean Taylor. I appreciate those guys so much. What an amazing lineup tonight. I, uh, it's, it's an absolute honor to have them all come on the show. I also want to thank my producer, my brother Dallas, who's a busy man but always finds the time to fit the podcast into his schedule. I appreciate that. Couldn't do it without you, Dallas. Thanks to our sponsors, CST Tires, Yamaha, thanks to Blue Crew, Valvoline, SSI decals, DID racing chain, Namira Technologies, Bronco ATV and UTV components, Evans Waterless Power Sports Coolant, Forworks Carbon, DP Brakes, Gripped Gloves, Blenders Eyewear, Mountaineer Brand, Avocado Green Mattress, Roman, and Oats Overnight. Support the brands that support our show and don't forget to use those codes to save. If you enjoy the show, we in encourage you to donate via patreon if it suits you simply visit our website diggingdeepatvmx.com and click the support on patreon button this contribution will help prompt continued growth and improvement of the show perks will be available to those who contribute including hearing your name on the show we greatly appreciate that also new digging deep shirts are available now in all sizes purchase on our social media platforms and the shirts look amazing and are only $25 with all proceeds going directly towards constant growth and improvement of the show. So view this as your opportunity to support us while getting a cool shirt in return. And remember you can always call us with your questions, concerns, suggested topics, business inquiries, and more. So this is your chance to be part of the show by calling us and leaving a voicemail today or anytime at 920 920- 569-3519. That's 920-569-3519. Also follow the show on social media, Digging Deep ATVMX Podcast, and myself, Cody Jansen, for additional behind-the-scenes content. And again, we'll keep you posted, so watch our social media accounts, and we'll keep you guys updated on any updates on schedule changes or anything else due to the coronavirus outbreak and everything surrounding that um, right now. Again, as of right now, we have nothing to report, but when there is something to report, we will report it as soon as we learn on the digging deep pages on my personal page, everything else. So, um, we'll keep you posted on that, but again, back to happy things, keep the support coming and we'll keep the fire content coming as well. We love the screenshots showing that you're listening. So send those in and I can promise that we'll keep sharing them. Again, subscribe to the show, give us a rating, tell your friends, share our posts, wear our shirts. It all helps spread word about us while growing the sport that we love. And a reminder that the show is always available and to everyone at any time on diggingdeepatvmx.com where you can find our, all of our shows and our show sponsors and the discount codes that come with them. You can find everything right there um, in that one spot. Up next is race number two for the pros and the amateur season opener at Underground MX in Kemp, Texas. Hope to see you guys there. With that, for Chad Weenan, Alan Myers, Brandon Hogue, Sean Taylor, Tyler Hamrick, Dallas Jansen, and I'm your host, Cody Jansen. Awesome show tonight.
Thanks for listening to the number one podcast in ATB racing. And until next time, thanks for joining us in digging deep with the stars of ATB motocross. DNFs than James Stewart. See ya. Love ya. If you don't chew Big Red, then what the?